we should be streaming on Twitch at CaptainReboot.com. And hello and welcome to the first episode of uh, this new gaming group. As you might be able to tell, we are still getting things set up here. We are currently waiting on a player. And um, one of the players with an accomplice decided that instead of letting me stream with one per area like I spent all day setting up, they would appear on the same camera together acting like friends, um, which is a little rough on me because that's not what I was expecting. Um, but that's okay. So a couple more seconds here and that up and running seeing a commercial right now i'm just waiting through my commercial to make sure that i can see what's going on and you're probably hearing the commercials loop back hey i can see myself hey you gotta put clarity and erk clear again hard-coded ah, all right rest in pieces yep 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 so let's go ahead and get that done. Uh, as we're doing that, uh, could someone, uh, uh, June, since you happen to have that uh, up that you were able to see that, could you flip on the audio on your side and just make sure you can hear while we're talking? Sure, one second. Wait, just her? Uh, anybody can turn it on if they want to. It's just a matter of uh, a double check to make sure that we are coming through as this will be the first time that I'm using it and yes everybody's coming through awesome well I didn't hear Aaron because Aaron wasn't talking I'm 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 here yay which one which channel was this put up on all right we got everybody this uh, is on captain uh, reboot got it twitch.tv run slash captain reboot As I experiment with my last couple of buttons here. All right, I just upped our input volume just a smidge because I think we were a little quiet. Okay. Um, and if that's better, awesome. If anybody else is a little quiet, just let me know and I can crank up your input. Actually, I'll just do that across the board because I usually talk loud. All right, and we are waiting on a player, and as soon as they arrive, we'll get started officially. Uh, but as we wait... Megan's a little quiet. Megan's a am little... Am I quiet or am I not... Oh, am I still... Oops. No, you're not muted. You're just, um, this is just on not the... This picking me up. up. There. there. It's there. picking you up. It's just on the actual stream itself. It's a little bit quiet. Oh, Give me okay. a second. I will do. tweak a get few things. No. Disable. Damn sticky keys. No. Damn sticky keys. Filter keys. Get out of here. Do you, Do you want me to keep talking? talking? Do you want me to keep talking? Whoop. Whoop. Better? Not better? better? Not better? Whoop. Whoop. Oh. Better. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was going to be like, I'll let Clarity decide for that. I was liking the double feedback, though. That was pretty freaking awesome. It's like, it's a mirror thing where you're doing this and it just has a thousand images of you. What? I love the and Urk. Oh. <laughs> Working on it. Urk. Working on Clarity it. Urk. Urk. Clarity Urk. There we go. Beautiful. So, uh... <laughs> Uh, we are going to be playing through uh, Waterdeep, uh, Dragon Heist, and then moving into Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Uh, eventually, we will be organized, and things will be all kinds of cool, and we'll be diving right into adventure. Uh, but at the moment, we are working our way back from not having been streaming before and starting to get the technology sorted out. So, uh, as we wait for our last player and we sort out the technology... Uh, let's start with a few introductions. Hi, I'm Casey. I will be DMing slash GMing the game. Um, I'm also the one pushing the buttons, so if things are going wrong, I will try to pay attention. And hi, Sin. Um, do that. And hello, Martin. What the heck? 
Um, Martin. So hello out there in Twitch streaming land. Um, and by the way, players, if I happen to just go off on a tangent and start talking to somebody who's not, you know, one of you all, it's probably in response to there. Hello. Um, feel free to do that as well. Uh, if you start going weird pixelating and hearing robot voices, that probably means you're overtaxing your bandwidth. And don't do that. Um, but so far, the players have done a few things. They have won a few battles. They have explored in the uh, sewers. That was a bit disgusting. Um, and they have fought with an Ithalid and a half-orc who was being rather mean with some fire. Uh, to our good friend, or at least Volo's good friend, Floon, a pretty boy who they rescued. He was damseling quite well. Uh, but now... They find themselves in the sewers, having slogged their way here, fought their way through crocodiles, defeated some Drugar and a dwarf. Uh, they know that there is something horrible in the bathroom. Uh, there was a potty emergency, which the players doubted. They grilled the poor dwarf and Drugar, but it turns out that they were being very honest. It was indeed a potty emergency. Uh, and there is something oozing and sliming, trying to get out, or perhaps waiting there for the next person who needs to use the facilities. There are also two goblins, snoring and drunk, uh, on either side of Arrow Slits. Uh, they're just a little bit there to the north and west. And there are some unconscious Drugar and dwarves because the party decided not to kill things. Oh, hello! Thank you, Flying Ostrich, for the follow. Oh, Flying Ostrich for the follow. Um, and... I'll get the names. You know who that is, right? I do sort of now that I said it and made a fool of myself, but that's fine. Um, so, uh, I, thanks, June. See that? You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I thought um, I already was. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a new username. But uh, on that note, uh, please do follow the stream. Uh, we have games playing all the time. Uh, and by all the time, I'm meaning like maybe four to five nights a week at this point. Um, I'm playing in a couple of them. I'm DMing a few of them, and it's a lot of fun. If you'd like to follow along, if you'd like to play, feel free to hop in and join in the Discord and hang out, and we're happy to have people play. Um, Sin can post the fancy stuff with the links later. Uh, in the meanwhile... What is the party doing at this point? I think um, Ashley may have uh, fainted. It is, may just been a little bit too much for him. Uh, he has a weak constitution, as we know. He has to take carriage rides. He can't walk. Um, maybe a little overstressed now that he was clunking along in the sewer. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fire and smoke, and he's having himself a little sit down next to Floon. While that's happening, uh, what's the rest of the party up to? Uh, the Ithlid, uh, the tentacle-faced purple fellow, uh, used a eyeball-shaped stone to teleport out. Almost took Gemma with him. Um, so what's the party doing? And as you answer that, I'll ask you to go into a little more detail uh, and tell me whatever name you would like to be known by. Uh, thank you, Mick Rune Forge. If that's one of you, you're starting to trick me now. Uh, but thanks for the follow. But uh, another guy from my clan, Martin awesome. and him from, from my clan. So, hey, we love having friends. Uh, so if you want to play D&D, &D, Mr. Person from the clan, um, hit up the discord, hop in. Love to have you. Uh, but I'm saying uh, too much. Who'd like to go first? Uh, I think I would. OK, uh, as there were people who, had, who were unconscious and they cannot go until they've been not unconscious. Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, all right. Yeah, so we have to take care of people. The bird is still on lookout to watching the door, just making sure no shenanigans that we need to prepare for. No, sh right. no obvious shenanigans. That I mean, it's becoming a more inviting place. Yet. You think it's like cleaning up the area? You know, it's got like a minty smell, like the kind of bathroom somebody would want to walk into, you know, without their guard up. Nice. Uh, so I am busily trying to do a couple cure wounds. Okay. For our uh, for Irk and for Clarity, so let's do one of those. Much do appreciated. One of those. 
And as you're doing that, if you could also go a little further and introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, right, right. Which, which um, so, by the way, so, uh, you, you all have a little bit of more draw power than I was expecting for us first time streaming on a Sunday night at <laughs> 7, already having a bit of an audience here. So Hi. I was expecting a little more Casey can goof up time. But thanks for putting the pressure on. That's awesome. That's awesome. Get wrecked. We have friends. If yeah. they're if they're my if they're my friends, I they they don't judge. Uh, so hi, I'm Aaron. I'm Aaron. I'm playing Padinka. Padinka is a very salacious cleric who is a follower of Selene, who is a goddess of the moon. She's a very big believer in uh, following your dreams and being independent. She also has a child that she's looking for. Uh, that is uh, somewhere out there that she maybe let take the fall for one of her shenanigans in the past. So, you know. Mother of the year, 100%. Yes, absolutely. As as someone in the party does tend to point out every once in a while. So um, as, the, as the healing goes around, everybody gets that little jolt back to awareness. Uh, and right now, I believe uh, we have Floon huddled in the corner. Uh, we have uh, embers from where draperies were set aflame because people suspected there might be things hiding behind the draperies. Uh, we have a dead half-orc? Did we kill him or did we knock him out? Anyone recall? I think he was killed. I think he was killed. I think a dead half-orc uh, and the Ithlid who escaped, as well as a dead brain... Uh, which was doing its best to chew into somebody's head. Um, I think that was Urx. Really? Yeah. Oh, was that Urx? Or was it... That would be Urx. That was Urx. Yeah, Urx are... Our, our, our chewing on his brain meats. He's trying to get in there. So, uh, who would like to go next on what they're doing and introducing themselves? Should I go next? Sorry, I'm I'm posting the link to my friends now. Ah. Okay. Well, I I can go next because okay. uh, so so to tie on to the Padinka thing. So I'm Simone, uh, flying ostrich gamer tag Megan real name also related to three of the five people here right now. Awkward. Um. So Simone has been working with Padinka and helping her out. Oh, with her little side business, kind of as a guard, I have a familiar, which is my raven. Um, I'm kind of a little bit surly. I seem to not like a lot of guys. Um, so she she had a little bit of a rough past with them before. And uh, she has a tendency to try to be protecting women and children and making sure that they're okay and they can survive on their own in the world. Cool, cool. And Trickster Rogue. Trickster Rogue. Okay. Uh, and what are you doing at this time? Right now? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm figuring I'm probably going to be stealthing around to see if there's anything else we need to look out for sure. or anything that might be interesting for the party. Should Sounds I do good. a stealth check or... Stealth check will work. Let's see how quiet you are. Now, you're, you're currently only stealthing for the benefit of Pass Out Drunk Goblin in the northwest corner there. Uh, so you'd have to be pretty bad to wake him up. Um, but luck, no, you're, you're really good at this game actually. So you like walk up there, you know, draw on his face, do whatever it is you want to do, and you're fine. Um, you do find a couple of uh, secret passages around. Uh, not so much secret secret as they are just hidden a little bit uh one of which is located right here let's get to the where you can see where i'm pointing thing here Whoop. right there uh okay. that chunk of wall can be removed and uh allows exit back into the sewer and the way it falls away it sort of acts as a drawbridge allowing a cross without stepping down into the water itself. The other one you find is over here in the eastern area, and that again allows a drawbridge across to there. Hmm. Hey, real quick, Padinka, yes. was that three points each for both of us? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
once I get that set up. Uh, so, Rogue is roguing about. Who would like to go next between our Irk and Clarity duo? I guess I'll go first. Uh, I mean, we both kind of woke up. We're, we were unconscious. Um, I'm kind of frantically padding around and making sure that Gemma is still here because mm -hmm. I last uh, last thing that happened was uh, the guy was going to put an orb in this little divot in the ground, and so I shoved Gemma in there mm -hmm. just to make sure that he couldn't. Um, and then he definitely destroyed my brain uh, a little bit. So just a little. I'm I'm looking for Gemma and holding her close. Okay. Gemma, our savior. Uh, I, I, I am June, and I play Clarity. I am a tiefling monk, and I am bubblegum pink, and everybody loves it. And uh, she is very fun, and she is trying to be more balanced, so she's trying to not jump in and just punch things, and not be overly zealous and act first before thinking. So that's kind of her, her thing. Sounds good. Now, I will collectively need a description from the whole party of who and what Gemma is, by the way, since we, oh. did, since we did title this. But but we can wait till after the, the next uh, player character introduction. Uh, Irk? So I'm Cheyenne, and I'm playing Irk, who is a half-orc barbarian. Uh, he's a mercenary. His sister has ties to a guild that this group is currently working for and that's he kind of just joined in to keep an eye out and help them um Irk is a half man of few words he does a lot of grunts um he's pretty tanky and that's kind of his thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i think i mean he just woke up from having his brain just chewed on for the last hour so he's a bit out of sorts and he's not exactly the intelligent type in the first place so he's probably just one of these yeah there, there was a bit of an intellect of our trying to get into your brain uh at that point uh, fortunately it was dispatched via mace i think before it got in there so it was i believe so it was kind of squished and then maybe cut I th away. I think the, the mace did a little bit of damage, but didn't actually have something to do with it, too. Okay, so... I, I feel like there was something... There was some help happening. He did. You know, maybe he did something. Who maybe. knows? Who knows? I mean, he's just... He's over there with Floon, damseling it up. So, you know, two of them are off in that. Hi, <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> hey, Tyler! Uh, so... Let's see here. Uh, what else have you found as you were moving around? Uh, we did talk about the entry area where you found all the grubby cloaks and beat up weapons. That's kind of useless. Uh, the watch post where the goblins were stationed. Uh, they are snoring away and you have done whatever you wish to them. I think one of them is already manacled up uh, with Padinka's um, ever increasing supply of manacles slash fuzzy cuffs. Um, the sleeping area where we left the Drugar and the Dwarf uh, also trussed up, um, sleeping on dirty mats. We talked about the bathroom where a ooze is currently trapped. Uh, we fought our way through the main hall where the curtains are now burned. The half-orc is dead. Uh, a little raised platform with the, not a throne, but you know, a nicer seat. You know, this one's actually got like a cushion on it. And now you've made it into the teleportation room where the floor, uh, basically right next to where Clarity was laying and starting to pull herself up, has a huge stone eye uh, carved into it, the pupil of which um, was missing and was the key that the Ithlid used to escape. Uh, now the eye has been a pattern, uh, or a, a symbol of the Xanathar's guild a guild run by a beholder, if rumor is true. Um, let's see here. Other places that you may have been. Oh, that secret room that you found over here. So back up here to the north and east, uh, another trap door opens in the wall and falls across uh, and allows you to uh, continue on. And you realize that uh, the area that you can get into up over here is uh, a basement or a cellar. Uh, 
Um, there's a number of beer kegs uh, sitting down there, quietly fermenting, minding their own business. And it shows to be a fairly clean uh, establishment. The uh, kegs are well tended. There's no debris lying around. And the wall where the secret door opens looks like it's swept recently or swept recently and thoroughly to keep out pests. The other spot that you may have noticed uh, that there's a little bit of a squeeze way is over here in the southwest corner. Uh, this tunnel's much smaller, maybe only two to two and a half feet wide. It'd be a little bit of a, you know, uh, wriggle to get your half-orc friend through there. But uh, you could. Uh, you're not sure where that one goes yet. You'd have to uh, embark heading that way uh, to find out. So, with your prisoners, your slumbering guards, your ooze, and yourselves, what all would you like to do? I'd like to um, take a second here. Can we just, real quick, Simone, can you tell them why the curtains were on fire? Uh, because I ran up to them with a torch, and I yelled at the... Um... I, I think I was yelling. I can't remember his name now. It was the, the guy, Ithlid. The Ithlid. Thank you, because names are not my thing. I basically was trying to get them to stop what they were doing because they were hurting somebody? So, they, they were. They were torturing they were Floon. Yeah. Uh, the half-orc was standing over Floon, uh, a flaming fist just scalding the man. He was almost unconscious, just, you know, writhing about on the floor. Um, flopping about like a fish on a hook. Yeah. Uh, other things, though, um, I do have a health potion if somebody wants it. As a not evil DM, I will let you know you probably won't need to use that. Okay. All right. Thank it's you. It's fine. I'm, I'm good with three hit points. I can I can do it. So, if I fall unconscious no. again, it's my fault. <laughs> well, all right. So, so, so let, me this, let me say this. If you don't open the bathroom door you probably will not need to use it if you want to investigate the bathroom that's a different ad piece of advice but i got it last <laughs> words. um so uh one of one of the things we still have to do is explain Gemma a little bit um Gemma is a rock that was found by a previous character uh played by one of our group uh who is since passed on or has been taken by a necronancer we're not really sure but uh she seemed to believe that uh Gemma was explaining things about the mountain and whatnot and has become a talisman and sort of a uh a god a, yeah like a, a a defining character in the group herself she has so far uh helped us best a dragonling or wormling she has uh, dealt a death blow. She has done a lot of things so far, so she's pretty cool. Um, almost, it was almost enough to convince that dragon to leave. Almost. So close. Uh, but uh, now, uh, as far as what, what Gemma looks like, um, yes. uh, could I have a physical description of this uh, stone? So Gemma is a little rock with googly eyes and a bow, <laughs> because <laughs> Clarity thought, why not? So, yes. Uh, so the totem of the group is a little rock with googly eyes and a bow. And I don't think everybody in the group has met Gemma fully yet, but uh, yeah. I was Aware just going to say that yeah. Irk, Irk has no knowledge of Gemma's existence no. until the last 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Where he well, kind of had something blocking his view. <laughs> he yeah. had a lot of people blocking his view. Plus a plus a brain thing. And a, yeah. you know. Uh, so Padinka's going to go over to Floon and make sure that he's all in one piece. Uh, so. Floon does appear to be all in one piece. Uh, all his wounds appear to be superficial. Um, I mean, even, even an evil half-orc would not mess up that face. So, you know, he was making sure that he was like, you know, burning the insides of his wrist, you know. You don't just okay. you don't mess with that. You keep talking about how attractive Floon is. Is that because you're attracted to Floon, or like is that because he was like all I'm hearing is how attractive <laughs> Floon is, how pretty he is. He's a pretty well, man. I just well, I, they well, had a they actually had like a whole poll a year ago and like like seventy five percent of the men and women both thought he was the most attractive man. Yeah. Most attractive man in Waterdeep. Mm -hmm. In Waterdeep, yeah. 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 Most <laughs> eligible Waterdeepian. 
So, so Padinka is putting the schmooze on him as well, but not for the reason you would think. She's not interested in Floon. He's too much of a pretty boy for her. But she is interested in eventually uh, signing him up to be a happy wife representative and sell her wares uh, at, uh, to the upper echelon for her. You know, I feel like I feel like that that needs a little digression to explain that. But so, we're gonna we're gonna wait on that one because I have okay. something coming up where that might fit a little better. So okay. We'll, we'll hold on that one. Uh, but uh, yes, Floon's very responsive to the idea of anything that gets him out of, you know, the sewers. Um, so you do have, uh, you know, a position of strength with your argument and you're convincing also the fact that he's just been tortured for the last two or three days. So well, I haven't been convincing state. him yet. I'm just buttering him up and getting him to getting him used to the idea that I'm a good person. I'm a friend. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's like my hero. And like, you know. He swoons into your arm. Floon, yes. swoon. Floon, swoon. Yeah. Uh, I mean, his 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 name is a verb and it's a past tense. So I mean, that's how that's how pretty he is. Past tense verb name. Um, so fly, I floon. Guess... No, okay, never mind. <laughs> nope. He's last year's so, fly guy. Um, so does anybody want to see what's down that little tunnel? I mean, I can go. I'm I'm tiny. So are we talking about the teeny teeny tunnel or the, the teeny, other teeny, tunnels? Teeny, tunnel. The teeny tiny tunnel. I thought well, we should send the bird. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say if you—I mean, if you want to go down, you can go down. I can send the bird with you, or I could just send the bird down to spot check. Does the bird have? Sure. Um, does the bird have dark vision? Mm. So Padinka's gonna go. <laughs> but I can give you—I can give you my little hooded lantern because I'm assuming it's. I'm, I have dark are. vision, sweetie. I—I I don't need it. Okay. Well, so you don't want the bird to go with you? Well, the bird can't see. And I can go more easily in the dark and just check it out. Okay. Than hanging around with a, a lantern. We all know how good you are at stealthing. Mm -hmm. Shush. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tie a rope around you just to make sure you don't get lost. <laughs> think, uh, okay. Think, uh, our quietest so party member. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> if the party would arrange themselves uh, as they wish to be. Uh, now, this, uh, this little... This little inlet does come out of the sewer, so you'll have to kind of make your way around or jump down off the little ledge there um, and uh, squeeze on over. Um, okay. Oh, can I borrow a pair of her handcuffs and she's like tying people up and we'll just make sure this guy's not going anywhere either? Sure. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Wasn't Ash, there a second one? There is, uh, but he is already uh, all trussed up over here. Um, so we have. He's the one uh, I gave the dirty water to. He is. Yes. Yeah. He is. So, you know, when he wakes up from his hangover and reaches for his water, he's going to have a very, very bad day. Um, <laughs> Ashley heroically uh, offers to stay back um, and tend to Floon. And uh, the rest of you move on up. So, Bedenka, you are easing your way along this hallway, and it opens up a bit into a larger room. Uh, that room is inhabited by a creature. Should I roll a stealth check since I'm trying to be relatively I mean, you can inconspicuous? Roll a stealth check. Okay. This was the gelatinous cube uh, way, right? The it gelatinous like cube had passed this way recently, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the walls are cleaner, the water is nasty, but you know, the water level hasn't risen much yet, so Less nasty. Holy crow, I actually did something right. So, uh, you're sort of making your way along, squeeze, 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 and you see sitting on the floor with his back to a set of stairs, just kind of idly watching the area from which you're going to be emerging, a three and a half foot tall maybe if it stood up rat like humanoid it's got a ratty face paw hands ratty tail very nice vest breeches are a little rough um but uh you know he's just sort of sitting there um i think he's probably smoking a pipe i feel like he's a pipe guy so he looks relaxed and he looks relaxed he looks like he's his job is probably just to sit down here and, you know, kill rats that come in that aren't him. Um, you know, make sure no intruders. Keep an eye out for the ooze. So, Padinka comes back and lets everybody know what is back there. 
So it's a friend. I don't know if it's a friend. It's just a being that we don't have to deal with. We can go take Floon and go back and not, not even deal with him. Did he see you? I don't think he did. Didn't seem to. Did you see anything else in the room? Did I see anything else in the room? Um... Mr. DM, sir? <laughs> do you do want me to... Do a roll or something? No, I mean, you saw other things in the room. There were uh, some storage crates down there, a little bed that looks like someone could sleep in, a set of stairs leading upward, um, and then a number of miscellaneous goods further back. It looks like the nicer stuff would be further away. The stuff that could handle getting wet sometimes is closer to you, so sort of like up on pallets or, you know, stones. So it looks like it's a storage uh, unit for some building above. Probably. Not Do nearly as not nearly as nice as the uh, uh, barrels up in the brewery area. Can we do like an insight check on like which buildings these might come up into? Uh, a geography check. How about yeah, something geography-ish, like, history, perception, investigation, something. Uh, sure, I'll do investigation. Okay. My investigation is five. I, I mean, sure, she'll do investigation. <laughs> hey, where are we? And I'll give her the help action. Ooh, uh, does quite well. And in the bottom right-hand area of the rolling area, can you hit where it says as and change it from your name to your character's name? Oh, yes. No worries. Just because I'll get confused. Um... So, uh, the hatchling swarm names are still down there, by the way. Hmm. What's that? Shahagan, Blade Master, and Baron. I don't know. Those names are all down there in the bottom. Oh, uh, that's from the uh, when I gave you all control of those, so you could do your uh, test run. Thingy thing. Yep, I yeah. will get rid of those eventually. Uh, but in the meanwhile, the area that you're in, you believe you're in the halfling part of town, uh, which might explain why some of the passages are getting a bit tight. Uh, the area to the north and east, you would expect to be a brewery or tavern. And as you're trying to think about it, you know that uh, the, the Peabodies uh, are a halfling family who brew ale uh, in and around uh, this area. You're likely, in, you're in the dock ward, definitely, but you're probably pretty close to Fish Gut Alley. To the southwest, um, that storage doesn't give you as much of a hint, but you're in the area of Spices Street. You'd need a little more information about what's up there, but if that's fish gut, then down there is Spices. So are we going to go make a friend? Uh, Do you want to go make a friend? The problem is, with you and Urk being as injured as you are, and me being as far down on spells as I am, do we really want to make another friend, potentially, that we have to fight? Or do we want to... He might know of a good way for us to leave without getting into trouble if he is friendly. The way we came. I mean, regardless, Urk is too um, broad to Mm -hmm. fit, so he's going to hang back. Did uh, Simone tell us about the other small, like the other exits? Because there was another one up to the north that would take that's us to the That's underneath some sort of a tavern. That, that's underneath some sort of a tavern, but we don't know what tavern. I think that would probably be our best way out, unless we wanted to climb through the sewers again, but there were gators. Oh, we left our gator skins. We have to go back. Yeah, again. yeah. yeah we have to go back for the skins. I was going to mention that, that. If we forgot that Urk would like to retrieve those. So the gators are going to have a real hard time being fit through the small passage where you saw the large rat figure. Uh, You could certainly carry the gators upstairs through the stairs, or you could trudge all the way back and sort of jump out into the bay, in which case you've got a little bit of swimming to do to get back to where you want to be. My shoes are already wet. Hey guys, we could split up. (laughs) Let's split the party! <laughs> I mean, you can. With two people down to three, let's split the party. Um, 
Actually, three people down to three. Ashley's down to three, too. I mean, technically, uh, nothing bad can happen to us. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing bad could ever happen to nothing players. Nothing bad ever. Yeah, your first characters, I mean, nothing bad happened to them. Yeah, we nothing didn't have happen to Clary. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, All right, well, Padinka's going to go back to I, I killed the first batch of characters. Yeah, I mean, if you want, what we can do, like, if you want to go back to Ashley and Floon, because and try to get them out through the tavern. If sure. those guys are going to go back for the skins and go out the other way, I can go with them. I don't like That's splitting up, but, but I know you can handle yourself sometimes. Eh. But Floon's kind of a wet bag, and uh, Ashley's Ashley's looking a little peaked. With the, um, uh, with the investigation check, would we know what would be above... Like, could we figure out what would be above that other basement that we saw? So that so uh, you've got northeast and you've got southwest. Northeast, uh, you know, there's a brewing family of halflings, the Peabodies. So you would assume that's probably the Peabodies' basement. Uh, you don't recall them having like a um, ale house so much as they brew ale and sell it to taverns. Um, the southwest, you couldn't quite figure out what that was based on the um, stuff the that you man. saw. I mean, you saw the Rat Man, and you're like, I don't remember there being a Rat Man store. Um, rat Man Emporium. Rat Man Emporium, you know, all the Rat Man gear. It's, it's, it's big, you know. Um, Joker gets all the credit, but... We sell Rat Man and Rat Man accessories. Exactly. Uh, so... So I don't... I don't think we should just go up through somebody's basement. I think we should tr trudge back through the sewers. Okay. I agree. Okay, I can we, give somebody a piggyback. That. All right. I'm fine with that. Yeah. So trudging back through the sewers, I do need to ask for an important die roll. Uh, and that is a d20, and you do not want to see a 1. So if someone from the party, please roll me a d20. Don't get a 1. 7 Yay, is not a 1. one. Congratulations. Uh, you make your way back through the sewers. You reach the tiny part of the tunnel where the uh, uh, gelatinous cube is not able to fit, and that's where the cleaner stops and reverses. But you uh, squeeze your crocodiles, alligators. 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 Uh, you squeeze your alligators out the tube, uh, and you end up exiting with... Uh, Wait. One does not mean poop falls on your head, and thank you for the follow uh, there... Uh, salty, ball salty ball bag. Bag. Salty <laughs> ball bag. We're here for you. Yep. So, so I've been waiting to say it. Just you got you take your opportunity when you can. But thank you for the follow there. Uh, so you do exit. You find yourself down by the bay and you work your way back around to the dock area. Now, do anyone in the party have skills with treating? animals, or are you just lugging alligators up and hoping somebody else will take care of this for you? What kind of check would that be? Like, survival? I I would think um, survival would definitely help with the field dressing, but I was hoping that maybe some of you had some sort of leather working or other sort of skills or tools. I do not. I, I would even I accept have maybe survival and okay. nature, if that would count. Okay. I have lotions. Lotions? <laughs> Lotions and lubes. It, I prefer that leather and lube. It puts the lotions on its skin, but you still don't get a handbag. Um, so, what, so what what were we hoping to get? I mean, alligator meat survival. You can definitely um, get sewer alligator meat to eat. Um, what I were you we trying to get out of this alligator? I think we just wanted stuff to make some gold. Irk one. Oop, I lost it. Irk once. Sorry. Irk wanted to make armor. Okay. So armor would be either a leather working or a smithing, or we'll need to talk to somebody to make armor for you. Um, so now you've just emerged from the sewers. Um, you do have uh, a place to stay. Do you want to kind of clean up first, or are you just like bring in your alligator sewer in there fresh? <laughs> are we cleaning the alligators too? I, I got to tell me what you're doing. Do we have like a, anybody got like a scrub brush? Toothbrush? Alligator wash. Oh, I'll use my great axe. I'll use my great axe to scrub its scales. Okay. <laughs> uh, so some prep is done. Um, 
uh, we'll say you, you get yourselves a, a little bit cleaned up. You're in the dock area, uh, and they're used to adventurers uh, and all sorts of things coming up from uh, the Undermountain, where the Dungeon of the Mad Mage is. So there are some rather unusual folks about. Um, you may need to lean on Yagra as a, you know, uh, by the way, Yagra, one of the character's uh, sister, is a member of the Zentarum, Urk's sister. Uh, and the party has gotten along fairly well with uh, with her so far. I love her. There you go. So, uh, Yagra, one of the important contacts so far. The other one, uh, Volo, who uh, Floon was rescued for and owes you all a bit of cash at this point. So, uh, are you going to collect that cash first or are you going to take care of the alligators? If we clean off the alligators, we could probably take care of that first. Well, I think I the first thing is that's going to happen is the people with the alligator skins that want to do something with that might go off on their own to do that. Mm -hmm. I would take Floon back to the inn to get him cleaned up before he's seen by his public because I know how important that's probably to him. I, so it, it we're is, all getting clean too because I don't like drawing attention to myself. I'm yeah, a we're all, bit like, we're this all is getting uncomfortable. washed down and, and gussied up before we go collect money. Sounds so loud. Gussied up? Gussy well, I mean, like, I'm with the pretty boys now. I might as well put on my flare, my my showboat outfit as opposed to my le my uh, armor. Floon is actually this the party does, episode. Floon actually does have a rule about he must be wearing 23 p pieces of flare. No, no more, no less. So got a bow tie, got a monocle, got a top hat. Yeah, he's got both pauldrons. It's, well, no, he's, he's got one pauldron and then the you know thing across. You don't you don't accent that shoulder. That shoulders. The, the, peop, the one that people that one you keep there, you wanna, they want to see it. Yeah, they want to get access to that one. Um, that's the one that gets perfumed, though. So uh, I'm learning new things about Floon all the time. So uh, as if you think that's the only thing he perfumes, you've got another thing coming. <laughs> Ball perfume. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, uh, we got salty out, and it's you know out there in the audience came for a reason, and it, it's the perfume from Floon. Yeah. But... Life hack. <laughs> but uh, the alligator sale goes well. Now, um, the leather workers, my age is showing. Where did my age go from? The fact oh, that the... Your, your child is here. Well, I mean, that does, you know, sort of bring that up. But about those TPS reports, there we go. Um, so, the I think we're going to get cleaned up. Mm -hmm. What armor would you like to have made from your alligators? So uh, if you check out the armor chart, you can have leather armor, studded leather armor, hide, etc. cetera. Uh, I believe Urk is a barbarian. So uh, Urk, if you wear certain types of armor or really almost any armor, you lose your unarmored uh, benefit. So you could have just... Um, Fancy clothes that look like they're made of alligator but aren't really armor, or you could have actual armor. I should get a fancy loincloth made out of alligator skin. I... <laughs> I... <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking a cape, but June suggested thigh-high stockings. No thigh-high... Okay. Um, so thigh-high alligator boots for Urk the Barbarian. Uh, I, Eric wants a cape. A and a cape. So, matching cape and thigh-high <laughs> boots. We do have three alligators. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was... No boot. No boots. Boot joke. Boot joke. Cape Cape good. real. Cape real. Okay. Alligator cape. Um, okay. Uh. What about a funny hat? Is it a hooded cape, or is it like... Well, I'm, I'm kind of imagining it's probably like alligator head, cape going back. Like, That'd be like so cool. Back I'm imagining I'm imagining three tails off of the head. Oh, okay. See, so I was thinking like it was probably going to be a, a set of teeth there, a set of teeth there, and a set of teeth there, and then sort of like Ooh. stitched down the back. Like a, like a I mean, three-part back clip. Yeah. So, 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 you know what? Oops, sorry about that mic thing. We'll figure that out. Uh, yes. Really, guys, this is a this is a fashion show. This is not an RPG at all. This yeah. But, <laughs> but anyway, you you art types, let me know what it looks like when you do your art thing. I see you with the paper. Um, 
So you let me know I on that you, one. It, this will I realized I wasn't taking bit, notes. This will be a little bit of cost, though. So I'm thinking we're probably going to end up needing to spend about five gold converting alligators into a wearable cloak. One uh, platinum is ten gold, right? One platinum is ten gold. Is Urk getting paid, too? I don't know. Urk doesn't do anything for free. I mean, and Yagra knows that. doesn't do anything for free. Oop, excuse me, one second. Every orc yes. wants Urk's cape. Sorry about that. Dinner was being arranged. Uh, so. What are you having for dinner? Uh, I don't know yet. So, uh, yes, uh, Urk would be getting paid. Uh, Urk was there when the deal was made. I believe all five of you uh, were promised some amount of money. And ten platinum each. Ten platinum each, indeed. So, uh, uh, the uh, leather worker says, you know, I'm going to need the five gold to start working, so I'll hold the alligators for you, but... How about you come back with that money? As long as we don't have to like carry three alligators through the city, I think we're gonna be okay with that. No, they're they're fine there. They can just, I got they gotta dry out for a while anyway before I start working. It's a process that I don't know. My apprentice takes care of that part. Yeah. All right, so uh, all oh, orcs are my given. Pop Somebody? Nope. Okay. So, I think back to the tavern to meet our friend Volo. So yeah, we're going to come downstairs with Floon and just be like, so all you would have to do is demonstrate some products, sell them, I'll provide the products, you make a commission off of whatever you sell. Hmm. Hmm. Um, that, that does sound rather good. Uh, and, and you say this will look good on me as I'm doing it, yes? Would count as uh, several of my pieces of flair? Oh, honey, I think you pull this off so well. Oh, yes, well. I mean, I do pull just about everything off well. Um, and anything you don't like, just have your friends buy it off of you. Convince them it's good. Oh, that is rather a good idea. Mm -hmm. Um I, I, my my good friend Volo actually gives very similar advice. Uh, you know, when he gives me gifts that um, aren't you know fashionable this season, I just pass them along to the less fortunate. Um, oh, that's so good of you, sweetheart. Uh, I mean, goodness on the inside, goodness on the outside. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, Floon uh, and party uh, arrive back at the yawning portal, and I've brought up an image of the yawning portal. Yes. Uh, brought up an image of the yawning portal, and inside there's a very large pit that people are lowered down, and they can get access to the Undermountain, a dungeon of mythic wealth and monstrosities. People take bets on those going down, not all come back up. Uh, the barkeep Dernan keeps things relatively in control, but the party did see a troll and several Sturges uh, emerge from that pit, cause a bit of a ruckus, and the party did quite well dispatching those enemies, rescuing, in fact, one of the Xantarum guild members as he was being flung down into the pit. And Simone, that was you, wasn't it? Diving after? That was me. That was Clarity. Oh, that was Clarity. Sorry about Simone that. Did like the, Simone did the, like, the upside ribbon down dancing thing. upside down thing, yeah. Silk slide. Silk slide. Silk slide. I, 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 was, I was forgetting who did what. I'm like, one of you was an uncontrolled descent. The other one was a fairly was controlled me. descent. There we go. Uncontrolled is very on brand for clarity. It, it, it did work out. Um, Jump first, think later. Thug number three. Got him. You did, thug it's, number three. No, no, it's the YOLO lifestyle. You're all in, the, you're all in for that. That's what my monastery taught. They taught YOLO. Uh... <laughs> we read the book of YOLO. <laughs> Uh, a, a, a Rune Forge. I, I don't think I'm going to uh, have a stun mechanic uh, in this level of costume. There is a madness mechanic that depending on how this party goes, we might actually see some um, short-term madnesses inflicted upon their enemies. But 
in the meanwhile, uh, you've entered in. You can see Volo is uh, sitting a little nervously by himself uh, at a table. His uh, great twisty mustache, you know, all nicely waxed up. Uh, he's got, uh, you know, his mug of drink in front of him. Um, uh, yes, uh, just sitting there waiting for you to approach, you know, his right leg thumping under the table. Hey, Volo, how hey, are you Zoom. doing, sweetheart? Oh, um, well, uh, I'm, uh, uh, well, uh, I'm, uh... We have a friend for you. Yes, I see that. You were fantastically prompt. I, um, well, uh, you know, well, uh, let's all, let's all have a seat. Yes, uh, you did really, really quite well. Um, unexpectedly well, yes. You weren't expecting us to do well? Well, I was, uh, actually, did I you was... See I was, Did you see my leap? I think our price just doubled or we put it back where he came from. Well, uh, you, you know, it's curious that you should mention that. I was actually waiting on an advance from my book, you see. I, I was he doesn't planning... have money! Well, I, I have... I have, My publisher, you know, he sent me um, the advance in a little of an unexpected way. Um, you see, I... Is it a drink? It's, uh, well, it's not. It's not a drink yet. It could okay. be a drink. <laughs> Um, well, it, I, that's very unlikely, actually. Uh, but, but I think he's sitting down right next to him, crossing her, crossing her legs, sort of like sideways at him. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I'm just gonna walk up behind him and put my hands on his shoulder and be like, "And please tell us what was happening about this." Volo's yeah. a gnome, right? Uh, Volo is a human. Uh, oh, he's, he's a human. He's, he's a he's a uh, he might be a half elf. Give me just a moment. Uh, I thought he was small because you said he was 21. He is. Um, let me find my Volo before I answer things wrong because I'm thinking of the wrong people. But I believe Volo is a human fellow. Yes, he is. I was correct there. He looks okay, a bit. My apologies. Like this. Look at him. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, well, um, and you do remember that Volo, uh, when talking to other people, uh, frequently uses the friends, uh, uh, spell, and he applies wax to his, uh, mustache as he's doing so. A little bit of makeup to, you know, make himself seem a little more dignified and composed. But among you all, he's let that guard down and is a little, little more nervous. Um, so, you see, uh, my publisher was concerned with the amount of money I spend on lodging. I, I do like to stay at different places. Um, and so, uh, instead of sending uh, the Platinum along, I expected uh, as, as, as a, uh, you know, a forward on my next book, uh, instead they sent me a place to stay, uh, which is, which is I, I believe, um, considerably more valuable than um, those Platinum that we discussed. So I was hoping that I could sign the deed for that over to you. Uh, that would take care of your payment. And it would also allow me to ask my publisher for another advance, um, you know, a more liquid advance. But in the meantime, you would have, uh, you know, a fine establishment, um, the finest house, uh, you know, all of um, Trollskull Alley. You know, Sugar, Sugar, we are not exactly settling down types. I, I can see that about you. You wouldn't settle for anything less than the best. Um, and that's that's why I'm hoping uh, you, you'll at least go and see um, this splendid mansion, uh, this this glorious estate that that's, it could be yours. Um, for... Oh, so you're saying you're going to give us your personal tour, are you? Uh, that sounds pretty nice. Well, We're not going to go to somebody's house without the owner being present. That, that does seem... Uh, Wise. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Might uh, be the first time you've made a wise decision all day, Padinka. Shut your mouth. <laughs> it better be good, or I'll show you lodging in the ground. Ah, uh, yes. I, I'm, I, I'm certain it will be. My publisher would never. Um, would never, huh? Would never. Uh, mm hmm. Yes. Um, okay. Well. I'm, how yes. about we go figure this out? We'll go look at your little house, and then we'll figure out how you're actually going to pay us. That's yes. Um, and and as this conversation is happening, Floon has just sort of like drifted away like a jellyfish. Oh no, he hasn't. And then he gets sucked back in. No, he <laughs> like <doesn't>. a jellyfish. <laughs> you, 
Padinka, every time he starts going away, she just loops her finger in her po- in a pocket or something and just like yank. Yeah, he just he's he's a he's a social butterfly. He's got a flutter, and as he starts to flutter, you're just like you and back he comes. Um uh, yes. Uh well um so they uh you know offer you a round of drinks and you know after uh being served they uh escort you to Troll Skull Alley. Which looks that doesn't sound very nice. That sounds pleasant. It looks a bit like this. What uh what are the names in Waterdeep like? As far as like are they all like this? Um many of them are. Uh Troll Skull Alley, however, uh is so named because of Troll Skull Manor. Uh Troll Skull Manor is the building to which Volo is attempting to bring you. Are we supposed to have a black screen? Uh no. No, you are yeah, not. Yeah, that's what I have. Uh, let's let's try and remedy that real quick. Padinka is really hoping this is something similar to something she's heard called Grey Skull, and uh, that there's a power sword somewhere that will be gained. But uh, she's not very hopeful. There, she there, wants to be warrior there princess. could be <laughs> warrior princess is his sister, isn't it? Isn't Zena the sister of? Shira. No, Shira. Shira, but it's like Shira. cousin. My bad. But she's Zena, also warrior princess. Zena and Hercules had a had a connection somewhere. Listen, I wasn't born in the 80s. So okay. uh, yeah, we know. <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> thankfully not, or we'd have a lot of questions for somebody else. Yep. <laughs> we out. Uh, so, welcome to Troll Skull Alley. Uh, Troll Skull Alley is a um, it's a bit rundown, perhaps, but not the worst place around. Uh, Troll Skull Manor, this rather uh, large building, which would help if I could point to things. This rather large building right here. Um, with the tower. With the tower. It has a turret. Uh, it has several chimneys to it. It looks like the bottom floor at one point was used as a tavern or other uh, restaurant style establishment. Perhaps at some point it served as an inn, but right now it looks a little bit uh, closed up, you know, Boards nailed up, that sort of thing. We'll talk about what's inside there in a second. Uh, but before you go in, uh, Vola leads you on, you know, a little tour of the neighborhood, just, you know, talking up. Uh, the area is obviously uh, uh, just, just, it's just gentrifying every day. Uh, anytime you look around, a, a, a gentleman is, um, you know, here. Uh, gentrification is awful. Uh, did I say gentrification? I meant the opposite of that. So I don't think that's what you need Hmm, someone seems to like to say things he doesn't mean a lot. Ah, uh, but, um, uh, so, uh... Here's, here's a quick question. Would we know whether this is Xan or Zent territory? This area likely lies outside of either. Um, or it's... Okay. It's... Neutral? Not neutral, Often but not claimed. It. It's it's there's nothing of strategic importance in here uh, enough that the gangs would be established. And you do know there are more than those two influences. Um, Zentarum and Xanathar's Guild just happen to be two of the biggest named thugs you've run into, and Yagra, of course, uh, kind of leads you that way. Um, but on the uh, little tour here. Volo uh, points out to you where uh, the carpentry shop is, uh, you know, for all your woodworking needs, uh, you know, uh, quiet folk, you know, they only hammer during the daylight hours. Perfectly respectable. Um, and of course, uh, steam and steel. Oh, yes. Um, smiths and metal forgers, you know, uh, armor for adventurers. You want to get that repaired. Um, and oh, yes, uh, the, the crown uh, apothecary skilled uh, right here up and coming. It's, uh, Make wonderful potions. Again, uh, every adventurer's dream. Uh, really, I would stay here if I could, but I need to wander uh, and use for my books. Um, there's, uh, well, the Tiger's Eye. Um, I believe he's a detective or investigator of some sort. Um, very, very important for adventurers as well. Um, 
there's a, 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 a bookstore uh, for research and such things. Yes, uh, the the bookworms treasure. They spelled worm uh, as dragon with the Y. Very clever. Uh, good thinkers in there. And um, well, uh, yes. And uh, of course, uh, here in the corner, convenient access to the sewers where many adventurers. Um, no, uh, yes, I think you're done with the sewers now. But um, so the the manor itself. Uh, perhaps we should take a look in there if there's nowhere else you wish to see first. Please, darling, lead the way. Oh yes. Um, I thank you. Uh, you're certain you don't want to go first. Inside Volo. So leads you inside. As as we go inside, I'm just gonna like tug on Simone's uh, like cape or something. She probably wears a cape. She seems like a lady who'd wear a cape. Um, I'm just gonna tug on it and be like, okay. we're, not, we're not gonna take this, right? Like we could sleep anywhere. I mean, we could sleep anywhere. This is also free. Well, it's not free though. It. I mean, but, 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 but one Simone would also know that. But, that but I feel like there's a anywhere. catch because everything this man does has a catch. I'm just saying that's fifty platinum. <laughs> so uh, I know you, you want are, you want your little dragon. You are aware. Uh, that a household uh, would be fantastically more money than that. Uh, what? You're talking about thousands of gold. Or what are the school districts like? Um, they homeschool primarily. <laughs> That's nice. So you know, big community. It's a it is a it's a big community. I mean, the the research center uh, has a Lingding library. Uh, curriculum that they give out, um, you know, uh, almost 100% employment books. layer. Uh, free audiobooks, yeah. Uh, program delusions. Um, the uh, the local uh, docs offer uh, career opportunities for uh, children ages eight and up. So you know, fully employed uh, by eight years of age. It's, you know, good progressive. What about uh, public transit? Uh, if you lay down, the rats will carry you away. It's important for <laughs> Ashley. You can. You can yeah, <laughs> he needs it. <laughs> you could just jump in the sewer and let it carry you downstream. Uh, That's probably what we did with him. We just let him float away. <laughs> Public pool too. Public pool. <laughs> so this is by the docks. So speaking of what, I did just see uh, that uh, Ashley was uh, just mentioning that they'll be joining in. When they do join in, these screens are going to completely jumble for the viewers at home. Uh, I will fix that as soon as that happens, uh, but I can't fix it until it happens. Um, so if somebody could bounce back, uh, that yes, they're welcome to join in. Um, I got it. The, uh, the carriage rides situation is they don't normally come to this area, but if you, you know, alert them that you would like them to pick you up, uh, you can get an Uber. So, um, uh, but the <laughs> Volo does lead you in, uh, to... So as we're going into this house, mm -hmm. Padinka has like appraiser eyes on. She wants to know the quality of the house, if there's any issues with it. She's got her, like, super-duper business senses on high. So any, like, investigation check she's doing. Business senses are tingling. Uh, I feel so, like it would make so sense for her to have real estate knowledge. See, I want to start seeing this deed that he's talking about, because he didn't have any money. Oh, we're going we're gonna to get to that. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. So. Um, and he, he is, he is, uh, like, as soon as you mentioned, he's like, oh, absolutely. The, it's, and he's got that. He's like, see, it's all official. Uh, we would just need to stop over the magistrate and have that signed off on, and then it would be yours. Um, and it does look like an official deed. Um, I mean, it could be a forgery, but the magistrate would take responsibility for figuring that out. Uh, you know, they do the uh, title insurance Padinka. and such things. Padinka, mm. we should check with our cop friend. Who got the little goodie bag? The girl, not the guy, because he was kind of a. Yeah, no, he was a, he was. Uh, his panties were in a bunch. Crouton. But uh, <laughs> we should talk to him or her and uh, see, you know, like she probably knows the streets a little bit. Yeah, and that's that's fine. I'm actually not intending on taking this at all if we can avoid it. But if he doesn't have any money, we might have to, and then just sell it or whatever we can to get our. Oh my gosh! D and D house flipper. 
I, you know, if I have to do that, I will do that. But I am just trying to get to the bottom of getting all his lies out in the open. Have we entered the house? So you're just like making your way into the front door at this point, and uh, you realize as you come in that the first floor is indeed converted to a um, tavern or tap room. Uh, there is an L-shaped bar with several stools. There's tables, but everything has been uh, looted, pillaged, and perhaps destroyed a little bit. The stools are a bit busted up. Um, the uh, the bar looks okay. It was a big hunk of wood. Um, but the tables have lost legs, turned over, that sort of thing. Uh, there are several fireplaces, uh, as well as a hatch that would lead down to the basement. Room for a fairly good-sized pantry, and then a kitchen with a fireplace for cooking. Did, Sounds um, good. you said we were by the docks when we came out of the sewers, correct? You, you did exit by the docks. Uh, Troll Skull Manor is a little further away from the docks. Okay, because I was going to say, if that rat man's in our basement, then we might have some, some issues. We're taking it. <laughs> rat man Emporium. Uh, so... I mean, if he is here, I might vote to keep it, just because that's hilarious. <laughs> I'd be down. Free friend. So there is a hatch to the basement. You could descend into the basement if you chose. But right now, I think everybody's kind of looking around the first floor. Uh, the construction, uh, could I see... Um... What are we looking for here? Sort of a, what could you do with it? Or what was it used for in the past? What sort of angle are we researching? What bedroom's gonna be mine? I'm sort of researching the floor set. What, the, what the actual value of the building is, period. Um, okay. How sound it is, what it would take to get it back up and running. So like, she's running through all the business aspects of sure. whether this could be a way of making money or if she, if it could be flipped as is and not you know give me a uh let's call that one an insight check probably sure the other question we're gonna have is what's the value to us as a party because we've been traveling around for a while and now it's like are we settling <laughs> down i mean we're kind of settling we don't down. even we haven't even found your daughter yet and i'm still very upset about well, this i think i think um out of character that the um the concept of the mad mage the mad mage's place is here right like we're not correct so the the dungeon okay. of the mad mage is through the entrance in the inn so the yawning portal right. tavern uh that big hole is where you'd go down and most adventures that are successful will go down explore a bit come up sell what they've sell what they've captured recover go back down um those who push their luck go down and never come back up. Um, those who are smart retire once they've made however much money they're looking to make or earned however much fame they want. But having a home base would be advantageous as a place to keep your stuff. But do we know that's where um, your daughter is? No, I don't think we do. But w well, we did know that he went, the guy who was in the necromancer. We know where he yes. went, but we, I don't know that we know that your daughter went with him. The the Lord of Lance Rock? So, the Lord of so, Lance... Oh, wait. I don't think I right. can say that on well, stream. We, yeah, we, so, have, we don't we, have any clue of where she is. So, so this is as good as any. Uh, we do run the parental warning, so you can say minor profanities. Lord of Lance Clock. Yes, Clock. That's the rhyme that you guys were using. Uh, so... Lord of Lance Crocodile Rock! <laughs> Noise. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, uh, uh, there the was some, up. by the way, uh, there was some uh, party history where some of the party knew some of the other party members in the past and some details there. Has that come to light yet? Did the party decide? It has no. not. Okay. No, but we, we, well, I feel like, okay, so let's find out about the house because if we start talking seriously about settling down here, Simone is going to raise us dink about that okay because she's gonna and that may give someone the opportunity to put two and two together depending on how the conversation goes Sounds i good. think out of character wise um clarity would probably be the first to jump on like well i need to stay here because something's gonna happen something big's gonna happen and i need to be there 
Gotcha. Irk is a mercenary and a loner, so I know, like, as far as settling down, he's not going to jump for that unless he has a good reason. I mean, so Clarity's going to have to start flirting with him soon, or <laughs> if he thinks that they are going to sell, like, if he thinks there's going to be, like, a monetary value coming from it, he, you know, oh, yeah, he'll get involved to sell it, but... Sure. So let's uh, let's finish taking a look around. Uh, so there's uh, two choices here. Uh, you can go up or down. I'm going up. Going up. Uh, so heading upstairs, you reach the second floor. Uh, the uh, second floor is accessed from outside the house. Uh, well, that's lame. So, well, it's a separate entrance, so that allows the tavern downstairs to not have people just, you know, making their way upstairs. Is there I a think we can make a floor. You could, the, you could absolutely make a hole. I mean, uh, and is there a bathroom on each floor? That was the other person was asking at the same time. Uh, there is a bathroom on the third floor. Does the do we have to go outside from the second floor to get to the third floor? <laughs> no. Okay, oh my I'm not walking really outside. If it's cold out and I gotta pee. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. hold hold on, hold just hold on, girls. Hoda, hoda, hoda. <laughs> okay, so they're like absolutely. running around in hey, circles. Hey, hey, like, hey, oh my god, hey, look at that. So, hey Simone, I'm going to take her aside real quick. While we're here, can you do some stealthing and check to see if there's any hidden doors? I mean, there's a tavern downstairs. Who knows if they had like secret passageways or any cool shit like that? Let me see. Let me see how not sneaky I can be today. Oh. <sighs> Can I give you the help action so, and distract? So <laughs> no, it's cool. It's cool. So I'm just gonna fumble through everything because I'm not like I'm like eh, I don't need to really worry about this. I'm gonna stealth for Patinka. So <sighs> so Simone is actually perfectly quiet. Like you would not know that Simone was there, except for like the boot prints being left in the three inches of dust and debris. So yes, she is silent and sneaky, but it's very obvious where she's been. Uh, as uh, you start to explore, so he, you know, um, Volo leads you out. He talks about you know the benefits of you know a porch, you know, with a nice roof, and he leads you around the porch to where you enter the second floor. And upstairs, there's a common room. Off the common room, there's this nice big den. Think of all the great stuff you could do with a den. Who doesn't want a den? Uh, is there's there, another. Is there a sign on the outside, like where there would have been a sign for a tavern? Uh. There is not a sign currently hanging. Okay, I just didn't know if it was like called something. Troll Skull Manor. Oh, this is Troll Skull Manor. I thought it was just on in, the block. Yes, this is Troll Skull Manor. This is what the alley was named after. Um, and he leads you around. He shows you about. Look, there's a, there's a spare room just in case one of your rooms needs replacing. Uh, this one's probably a bedroom. You could put a bed in there. Uh, probably take out whatever. That is, um, a rat. I, I, I don't, I mean, I do have a guide to monsters. I've seen rats before and that's not a rat. Um, it could have been a horse at one point, but probably not a rat. Um, on the second floor. Well, yes, honey, uh, I've seen worse. That's so that's like bringing a horse up the stairs. So, so uh, as you were all like very concerned about the bathroom situation, he's like, and look indoor outhouse. He shows you the privy. Um, and he leads you to, uh, on the third floor, uh, another bedroom. Uh, you'll probably want that. Look, a private bath for you. Yes, excellent, isn't that? Um, look, another bedroom here. Yes, uh, good. Uh, and another bath. I mean, you could use it for anything, but, um, you know, bathing is important. Uh, library. Uh, yes, uh, um, you could put books and such things in it. Um, another bathroom. Apparently, the previous owners really liked to use the bathroom. Um, I'm loving it. And uh, look, turrets. Uh, yes, uh, all good uh, manners should have a turret. Uh, you could go up there and look over the city. Scenic, very scenic. Um, and, uh, you, well, I mean, if you have creepy dolls, you could keep them here in the attic. Uh, and then some additional storage space. We can keep me in the thing attic. I'd like to make into a creepy doll and put in the attic. Is it me? No. I'm going to okay. stare straight at Bolo. <laughs> uh, okay, so can you can you show us the basement, sweetie? 
Yes, of course, of course. And he's down, round, and in. And he's like, and uh, he leads down in there. And uh, so this is the basement where um, you uh, store your wine and ale and other such things. If you wish to have a tavern or, um, I mean, I guess anything you wish to keep cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, your lotions? Lotions? It, uh, are those supposed to be cool? I don't, th I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> Those are not. <laughs> they don't need refrigeration. They're shelf stable. Uh, so yes, he, uh, you know, he, he leads you all around, and um, with the insight and the stealth check, I feel that you get a good feel that this is a very sturdy building. When it was uh, made, it was uh, very well made and very ornate. It's been through centuries perhaps of hard use uh so there's a lot of scuffs a lot of work that would need to be done but the um structure is stable and it could be converted to just about anything um that you'd like um what i would like to do i mean we've seen the the neighboring area mm -hmm. and it seemed like are there any buildings that look abandoned other than this one? How's um, the neighborhood? I mean, I said it was gentrifying and you guys yelled at me, so it's not gentrifying, but um, it's a decent neighborhood. It's definitely got its issues. It's It's got a bar that failed in it, so it's post-failing bar area. People have to drink in the streets. Sad. So we make another bar. You could make another bar or any business of choice or not. Um, I would like to tell Volo basically to stay at the house. Um, and I would like to go talk to some of the neighbors. Sure. I'm still exploring. This is, so. this is, this is really a uh, house hunters D and D style. So. Okay. So we're gonna leave. We'll leave Ashley at the house with Volo for now. Yeah, that's a good idea. And yeah. with uh, Flynn. Ashley, Floon, and Volo. Uh, oh. And you, of course, you would leave the Raven to actually watch over those misfits. Um, we just have Ashley in a wheelbarrow that we just leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna have the Raven talk to Floon, and I'm assuming that would be such a novelty for him. He would be absolutely entertained for hours. Yes, uh, Floon's like pretty bird. Want a cracker? Say never more. Never more, pretty bird. Urk is only interested in checking out the pantry space. Okay. There How is many a, snacks a, can we fit? It is, it is a pantry large enough for a uh, lively tavern, so you could fit more snacks than you could probably handle. Um, certainly That's enough space cookies. for all of your alligator sewer meat. More snacks than he can handle. He takes that as a challenge. Well, I mean, we saw how big the bathroom was, and, or sorry, the spare room, mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm. want to say the pantry was about the same size, and there was a horse in the bathroom, <laughs> so I think we're good. Sure. Yeah, uh, several Fair cheese enough. wheels could fit in there. Like like the big cheese wheels, like the... The hard ones. The ones you could crush a person with if you got it rolling fast enough. Use it like a wagon wheel. <laughs> so, Urk yeah. is switching from hand axes to cheese wheels. Cheese meals on sticks. Uh, but uh, there are a number of uh, buildings about. Some are uh, obviously households. Most of the households tend to have uh, either multiple families or um, the families and friends of craftspeople living within them. I mentioned some of the um, uh, buildings that uh, were about. Was there any that you were looking to talk to? I am looking for somebody who looks like they've been well established in the neighborhood, and what I want to do is find somebody who's going to be able to tell tell me about the history of the building, why the previous business failed, um, like did did was this like a uh, HUD sale where they got it really cheap because no one is interested in buying this building? Like, okay, that's sort of what I'm looking for. So I think. So Probably the best person to talk to would be one of the business owners. And uh, if you want the dirt on a particular person, it would probably be the private eye. 
Uh, but if you want the history of the area, I'm going to guess maybe the bookstore would be the best place. Um, that's that's fine. Okay, so the bookstore is uh, is owned by a uh, rather diminutive uh, dragonborn fellow. Uh, he's a gold dragon, uh, gold dragonborn, so no, no tail. Uh, he's uh, he's a little up there in age. He's got the monocles, you know, both of them, and um, so bifocals. Uh, well, no. Uh, as you see, as a as a dragonborn, uh, it's it's a monocle in each eye. The face doesn't really support a bridge across the snout sort of situation, so easier to just you know squint the whole time. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm going to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Pedinka. I am looking at a property that's down the street. I was just wondering if you could tell me anything about it or the neighborhood that we should know. Um, basically, we were offered to take on the property, and I just want to know if uh, if there's anything that is unsavory about the place. What happened to the previous business? Why the why did the there looks like there was a bar in there? Why did that close? Um, anything you can tell us, really? Ah, uh, well, that's a, a interesting question. Uh, it's good to meet you, Padinka, and your friends. And uh, my name's Rashal. Uh, I. Uh, I've uh, been in this area quite some time. I remember uh, early on when I moved in, quite some number of years ago, there was a half-elven man, rather advanced in age, who was running the tavern. He kept at it probably longer than he should. I think he should have taken on some help, but I don't know that his pride was allowing him to. And uh, you know how after a number of years, people can get a bit uh, fixated. So he kept trying to um, make it happen, uh, you know, odd dishes. Mushrooms so he was being the... experimental. Oh, yeah, it's fair, fair. And, uh, you know, being a bit of a, a mage myself, I, I understand experimentation, but eventually you have to admit when an experiment fails repeatedly that if you keep trying the same thing, expecting a different result, well... That's right. some way to insanity. Uh, but yeah, he kept at it, uh, and eventually his clientele left. I, I mean, when they're looking to do hard drinking and you're offering them some sort of watercress salad or whatever that thing was <laughs> he was making, uh, it's a mismatch. That sounds yummy. Well, I prefer meats myself. Uh, I'm not really certain what a watercress is. Or it's like why a chestnut. It's, I, thought that that was, I thought the watercress was a specialty of water deep. Well, uh, whichever they happen to be, I was a bit confused by it. Uh, I was You've hoping for a more... We found Ashley. Oh yeah, you were right. This does muck up the little windows. <laughs> it does a muck bit. up the list. So excuse me as I dart around and do that. Um, oh. will just be a moment. Do you remember that little card book where like you could flip through the faces, like you could change like a person's face and then their body and then their legs? That's one of the things here. So what really happens is it changes the layout of my set, and that moves everybody around a little bit, but I can fix it, I can fix it. And we're going to turn on... Jamie, are you there? Are you alive? Oh, Jamie, yet? Hello, we hear you. Yay! Cool. Oh, do we? should we do a sound check in the Twitch stream thing? Should be Should okay. Be, let me take a look. What kit kit? I did a uh, two hour phone call from like starting someone's journey to buy a car. Oh, so just as a quick heads up. Wait, hang on, Jamie. We are streaming live, so make sure anything that you say, you don't mind getting heard by a bunch of people. Yes, yes. I just, I did a two hour phone call to sell a car. <laughs> Not a problem. Just. Occasionally, when we get on, we're like, ah, kill my boss. And I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Oh, man, I love my job, honestly. Uh -huh. I just got overtime, and they're all cool with that. Nice. So. Did you, did you sell the car? Tomorrow, when the store that they're getting it from opens. Congratulations. Close enough. So. Uh, where we're at right now, uh, Ashley uh, was overcome with the fumes and the fire and had to take a bit of a rest and has been a little faint since then. Perhaps just, you know, trying to out-damsel Floon. The two of them got in a damsel off 
and uh, you know just couldn't faint fast enough for the couches to be provided to them. Uh, they've now found themselves at uh, Troll Skull Manor, uh, a uh, rather large building, the center uh, piece of Troll Skull Alley. A um, it's an investment property, and uh, a fixer -upper. Hello, it's a fixer upper. Volo, uh, who has hired you to rescue Floon, is trying to get you to accept this as payment as he's a little short on cash at the moment. The uh, forward on his new book is, uh, you know, presented to him as a deed, a place to stay, because the publisher is tired of giving him cash that he spends, um, you know, And dispense. not providing a book. Well, I, I mean, I... I uh, You've you've seen my guide, uh, and I have uh, I have others. Uh, I mean, uh, have you have you seen my my guide to Waterdeep, my Ekeridin, Ekeridin? Oh. So my question would be, what book are you writing now? And does it make sense for you to keep floating around when you can't seem to focus on getting it done? Well, I was planning on, um, well, yeah, uh. Hmm. uh that's a good point. Uh, I suppose uh, if you wished to take on the manor and rent me a room at a reasonable rate, I could stay here. Rent you a room for free? That would be very kind of you, yes. He, he said at a reasonable rate. We don't want to give I, him a free I, room. I, no, no, no. I'm I, saying that sarcastically because he hasn't had money. Uh, True. I, I, oh, well, I have some, uh, and uh, my, my good friend Rainier uh, is often uh, able to provide funds. I'm, I'm if, certain. Hmm? If we decide to do the house, because there's a very serious group conversation that will have to happen, and as Ashley has so kindly joined us, even though he's sitting in the room with Floon and Polo. I feel like uh, Ashley just came running up like, hey! What happened? A wheelbarrow ride. What I missed. Did you Scott. see the horse in the bathroom? He's... Hold on. He's he's <sighs> trying to pay us for the house. So that's that's what's happened. So there's and, no cash. Oh. Like there's there's like a there's like a slow pan as Ashley's running up. The camera turns to look back at where Floon and Volo are now handcuffed to one another, like either side of the arm around one of the posts, because Ashley got bored. So they're not going anywhere. Uh, but Ashley can join. Uh, we are currently in a uh, mage's establishment, a, a arcane library, speaking to a g gold dragonborn. Uh, he's a rather short one. Uh, and he uh, has just explained that the tavern um, basically was the under the care of a half-elven fellow who just couldn't keep up with it, couldn't get employees in, kept trying to... Um, you know, sell things that people didn't really want, and it just ran down from there. And then, um, you know, a decade or two ago, it finally just sort of closed down. Some folks had come through, but nothing ever really happened with it. So, Did we get this dragonborn's name? Uh, yes. Rishal. Rishal. R-I-S-H-A-A-L. Get you that one in chat here. Thank you. So, um, Rachel, do yes. you think, just just as a, someone who knows the neighborhood, if a normal tavern was to be established here with a standard fare, reasonable prices on drinks and beer, that it would do well here, or is it sort of like this is not a ta not an area that has the money to be spending on tavern drinking? Well, uh, I mean, I enjoy a good pint now and then, but. I feel the building's perhaps a bit too big. It's it's a big investment. I mean, that's that's a lot of real estate, and I don't know that someone would be able to get their money back from it. I mean, uh, such a place is in my what own if you shop. Got it for free. The free real well, estate. Well, we we would, sweetie, we would still have to invest oh. in making it viable. Function. There's no furniture in there. Oh, There's well, got to be 
paint it on the walls. You got to repair all the old holes. You got to put food in there and you got to put bartending staff in there. What I'm trying to well, figure out is if the area can sustain a bar, period. Well, I Would we have to pay taxes on this house? Would you have to pay taxes on the house? Well, I mean, if 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 you were, uh, you know, if you were of the the troll skull lineage and were making a claim on the house and you were to receive it um, as part of an inheritance, uh, you would have uh, oh, what's the fee? It's been years since I last. It's something like twenty five gold to take over an estate. Uh, you know, the magistrate charges that. Um, I can't imagine there would be any taxes do though any monies that you make are of course taxed uh, you know if i sell a book I... six percent got it yep yes you know seven percent if you're in downtown yep this isn't downtown right no no uh we're just beyond the line so you had the map of Waterdeep. where are we kind of geographically mm -hmm. are you kind of geographically let's go ahead and pull up the map of Waterdeep. Also, on the um, building map, these little, like, dashed outlines, are those balconies? Those are balconies, correct. We don't have a balcony. You... I mean, you don't. I mean, you said there was a balcony, but I haven't seen a balcony. I mean, he was talking up, you know, you could enclose... Oh. Build it out. From where we're we're standing, is there, like, any, like furniture like a uh, area where like, like a bar could be like what's what's around us right now? oh so the area that you're in the actual alley itself the only place that's really uh useful as a tavern would be the manor there is no direct competition in this neighborhood and you could definitely get a neighborhood bar going you know they're they're traveling you know outside their neighborhood rather than going to the corner bar the manor itself is really too big for just a business um, it's got three uh, three full floors. Um, the bottom floor would be the tavern. The upper ones you'd really need to either sell out, rent, or have a family in, um, or occupied as adventurers. The excuse me, I'm just trying to get to my spots here. But uh, the Dragonborn seems to feel that uh, I mean, if you didn't have the uh, real estate expense, uh, then certainly you could turn a profit. I mean, any money you make would be free money. So Troll Skull Alley itself is hopefully where you just got centered on. Oh, I'm sorry, I was fiddling with my thing. Can you oh, do that again? No problem. My mind didn't get centered moving. on anywhere. I'm uh, just looking at Trollgate. Where should I be centering? I'm Actually, you know, you'll be looking at. I see North Ward. So. Bottom right, C Ward on the left, and then Troll Skull Alley on your map. So where's North Ward? North Ward, C Ward. Okay, yeah. So scroll down and over to the right a little bit, and you'll see a black dot. Uh. If you zoom out. Now. If you zoom out, it's on the north half. Uh huh. See the pink line? Ah! Uh, hold on. No, because my computer is giving me problems. <laughs> pink line. It is a big mess. I, I see it. I see it. Okay. So, Troll Skull Alley is over here. You're a good ways away from the dock. Uh, you're a little bit off the high road, which is the main thoroughfare. So, you're not going to be a bustling business, but you're not too far off. And there are a good number of houses about. And if we hang some things from the rafters, I can just go and practice my acrobatics once in a while. <laughs> I mean, anything to draw a crowd. And Volo's, uh, you know, uh, you know, happy to talk this up to you when you come back. But at the moment, he's just trying to figure out how these handcuffs work. Um, but the um, dragon board is like... So I have one more question for you, Rochelle. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know anybody who is interested in running a tavern who would be interested in renting out that space? Because I personally would prefer to be on the other side of the bar. I'm not a big fan of serving people. So as you're sort of, you know, saying this, um, he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with anyone who is looking for that sort of business opportunity. Uh, my, the guild I work with is a little more um, 
arcane. Into literature. Well, literature, magics, that sort of thing. Um, and while that would perhaps uh, make a uh, good bookstore, I sort of have the market cornered here, and I assure you I am a very savvy business person and would not take kindly. And I would not want Thank to you. compete with you. I, I love the, what you have set up here. I, I appreciate that. I could see that, uh, you know, work together. Um, though, Irk, perhaps, um, would know that Yagra is always complaining about the condition of the bar that she is mm. in. Uh, and where does she live? And where does Yagra live? Uh, so Yagra's down at the docks. You might not get Yagra to move up here. But you do have contacts with some rather shady individuals who are always looking for new business opportunities. Okay. Well, I think it's time for us to huddle up, gang. Um, unless anybody else has any other questions. Not for him, unless Clarity wants to talk to him about books on dragons. No, I know enough about dragons. Thank you. Okay. Just Come thought back. that might be a pretty picture book. I feel like it'd be kind of nice to enjoy one of those mint drinks once in a while. Over We already left the tavern. <laughs> you were thinking. asleep. I'm just thinking. Mint, <laughs> mint drink. We so, get them. So, so as we're could. on our way back to the tavern, uh, to the two skull... Manor. Full skull manner, yeah. Um, um, I'm going to ask everybody else, you know, like, I am not a fan of, you know, buying businesses and running them. There's a lot of hassle and everything involved, but it looks like our not so clever friend uh, does not actually have any money with which to pay us. Um, it might behoove us to talk to Yargra, see if we can rent out the downstairs, get some income coming that way at least to clean the place up. Maybe we keep one of the floors for us to sleep in when we're here and then rent out the other. Um, I just, I don't know. What do you guys think? This is such a, this is not where I saw my life heading. We could have more parties. We, we could, we could finally have a girls' night for you, for real, in our own bar, and that would be the safest thing for you, too. I meant one of your, your store parties. Oh, you're right. We could also, I could host a lot of Happy Wife products here, and people would be able to come and try things out in private before taking anything home. Um, I like the ones that scoot across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, as that's and brought up... scoots across the floor! <laughs> so, as that's brought up, perhaps we could explain what the Happy Wife product line is, and how that ties in with the uh, adventures so far. So... <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm just imagining products scooting along. You know, the floor. you enchant them and you throw a box. You accidentally knock a box over and they start wiggling, wiggling so, across so the floor. Yes, they, they they do wiggle, but that's not their intent, honey. Um, I will explain that to you later. But they're not race toys. And no, private. they're not. They're not race toys. They're they're for adults. Um, so I'm an adult. Uh, you are, sweetheart, and I'm going to tell you, teach you so much that you are going to be so happy I did, but. You know, uh, um, maybe in pro maybe when we're behind closed doors, um, not everybody's comfortable talking about the kind of products oh, I sell, secret. which are adult toys, um, stuff for the bedroom, lubes and lotions to aid your wife to make her happy. Um, it's really for any woman out there, but it was basically because um, she found uh, that. <sighs> You know, she has a child, so she knows what it's like in the bedroom. Um, and sometimes she knows that maybe your partner isn't as caring as you would like them to be. But happy wife makes for a happy life. So she invented all these products and toys and whatnot in order to make a little income on the side. I mean, she does have, she has a side hustle is basically what it is. Um, and she is looking to, uh, you know, basically use that as supplemental income while she, you know, gets herself settled, um, tries to find her way in the world. She's not interested in settling down. This makes it for a very good project because uh, most places don't want to host her for more than a night. So the idea of settling down with such products is kind of uh, unsettling to her. She's never thought about being in one place with these kind of products for long. So I will, as a, you know, just a quick mechanical aside. Because they keep walking across the floor. 
They do walk across the floor. So, um, You're not supposed to leave them on! Turn them off! Conserve the batteries! Yeah, so... There aren't any batteries in this world, that's all magic. So on that note, um, mechanically, I mean, and not meaning mechanically as in how it works, but mechanically as in how the D&D rules work, um, she happens to be a rock gnome. Rock gnomes have a tinker effect, so they can make a toy. Um, and I wasn't clear enough on what toy meant, so the players ran with it. Um, so uh, they are unfortunately only kind of one at use, one at a time sort of things. So uh, Padinka has had to move on a few times uh, as her products require maintenance and not everybody's happy about finding out that. Now, Padinka could, if she had established a shop and spent some time, you know, really perfecting the craft instead of perfecting the sales pitch, make things that last a little longer. But so far, the Happy Wife toy line is, uh, you know, short duration. Um, we did already have a party before a recharge fee. I mean, the toys are a secondary product. She really focused on her her lotions and lubrications mm -hmm. first. Things that made you feel a little different. Mm -hmm. So there there are things going on there. Um, but yes, that could indeed be a portion of the uh, sales pitch towards this bar. <laughs> Experimental bedroom. The one on the left. Um, but, the one with the horse. The one with the horse. Uh, yes. Um, Witcher fans, that's the, the stuffed unicorn. There you go. Um, but. So, uh, oh. Volo, go ahead. Say, so out of character, I kind of want to know where Ashley's character is with all of this. Like, like, are you, is your character interested in this or not? Ever since I had that mint drink, all I could think about is wanting to get more and making my own and i want to sell it you can have some oh, drinks some you toys kind of in the wanna, corner you kind of want to bartend almost maybe you want to be the brew I wanna, master i want to be brew master okay okay weren't you all interested in those micro brews micro brews get some mead going but like definitely some mint drinks can we can we're is there anywhere can i ask where can I get a good mint drink? So, uh, you had the Yawning Portal's uh, mint wine, um, but uh, other mint drinks uh, are, aren't really super well done here. Um, so, that basement, that. that basement, Troll Skull Manor, uh, does have a basement. And mm -hmm. it's nice and cool, good temperature for putting aside some, you know, mint brandy, um, mint whiskey. Mint. Ashley's gonna invent toothpaste. Oh. <laughs> yes. I was I was waiting for him to invent a mojito. Mojito? Ah. I've muddled the mint exquisitely. Um so you could. It's certainly possible. Uh do you happen to have a uh, skill with brewing or brewer's tools? I know herbalism. Okay, so you can identify mint, that's a good start. Um you do you know how to put mint in a barrel and we can work towards uh learning how to use uh that brewing skill uh 150 gold and 150 days later you could be a brew master they have a correspondence course for it um or you could hire one uh we, yeah i think we were talking about hiring yagra and she knows I mean, she was basically who she served could, that, and, right? and maybe maybe Ashley could learn some things from her and work with her. Yagra, what do you say? Well, well, Yagra's Yagra's not, well we haven't talked to her yet. Um, He's like Ashley. shouting out in the street. Yagra! Yagra! I think that Urk would pass along this information to Yagra and she would be interested and therefore Urk would be interested. Yeah, you could tie it all together. Okay. Um, okay. Well, so, so, so You could definitely bring definitely. Yagra into the conversation if you wish. Well, out of character wise, I think another reason why Ashley would stay would be because he's kind of following Clarity because some stuff happened in Red Larch and he knows that she was involved in it and mm -hmm. he knows that uh, the person that he's looking for was also involved in it. So he's kind of like tailing Clarity a little bit, which is kind of hard because she's bouncing off the walls. But um, Clarity is in Waterdeep in order to catch up to the Necromancer that that whole thing happened. Um, so that's kind of her reasoning for wanting to stay here. 
Um, and I and think I've that kind of ties in with Ashley as well. I've been kind of starting to mirror the energy. So, although I'm normally a little more quiet and reserved because, like, I would really like to figure out where this all leads. You got I that mean, mint wine in you. That mint wine just kind of gets mint wine. So, um, yeah, apparently, like, uh, he he wasn't just, uh, you know, fainting and damseling. He had finally gotten into that mint wine that he'd been carrying around through the sewers the entire time. Like, mid-battle, the water. mid-battle he must have just, like, worked it down, um, and it uh, it kicked pretty hard on him. So, uh... Re-injured his ankle. That's what happened. Yes. Yes, re-injured the ankle. Uh, that trick ankle. Double joints. Mm-hmm. So it sounds from what everybody's saying is that we should at least take this as a home base. And if we can't get anything else out of him, we might as well get this house. I mean, at worst, we can try and sell it. Not that that's not a huge pain in the neck either, but... Um, I'm really good at sweeping. I can make it look pretty. Oh, well, I, I appreciate, that, appreciate that, sweetie. Um, but let's, uh, let's focus on getting the horse bones out first. Um, so can okay, I let's can I can I chime in here before you go make a decision because technically my character hasn't talked yet. Yeah. Go ahead. And uh, talk. so I think uh, this is all great for us as a group. My problem is the fact that there is a child that we are both still responsible you more than me that I... we still don't have. We don't know where she is. We You're just right. know she's out there somewhere. We followed her all that way to that little dinky town, and we we didn't find anything out. Like, where is she? What is she? Is she okay? Is she not okay? Like, Listen, I, am I the only one who cares here? Okay, no, I, I I care. Okay, I care about Erie. I'm trying to find her, but there, we have no clues and nothing to go on. I mean, what do you want me to do? This is not that I want to stay here forever. I mean, this is a temporary solution to recouping costs so that we can move on. Clarity's looking between them like... I mean, you did just hear me say... It's more, it's, sorry, it's she, more like this. She did say <laughs> Eerie's name. She did say Eerie's name, by the oh, way. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Wait, yeah. yeah. Hold on. What? what? Small? Well, well I'm, I'm small. small. I would hope anything that comes out of me is small. I don't... I don't know... I don't know who the father might be. I don't know how that works. Could start small. My mom's six foot seven. Wow. Okay. Um, eerie. Like, gray hair? Yeah. She's oh. skin. Like, oh. she has, she has, like, camo-looking skin because of her father. She's got some skin condition. Does camo exist in d <laughs> It's an, it's an actually, a, this, the skin condition, I mean, she used to be all, like, one color, but it has faded in patches. It's uh, called vitiligo. Uh, I, I think that's how you pronounce it. But, um, but yeah, it basically makes her look like she's, you could stand her up against a brick wall or a rock wall, and she just disappears. It's impossible to keep track of her. I know where she is. What? It, you lost her in a crowd. No, I mean, you know, know where she is. Wait, where is she? I'm I'm here to find her. I'm here to find them. Them who? Well, I I escaped. I escaped, and she's still there. You okay, well, sweetie? You need to speak in like full coherent storyline here, because I don't know what you're talking about. You escaped what? Lance, 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 man, Lance, 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 Clark? Lance Flock, Lance. Lance Rock. Lance Rock. Okay. okay. It's a, a guy, and he has a very cold touch, and you do not want to get touched by the cold touch. No, no, no. Because it, no, will, no, it just... will kill you. Okay. Oh, okay. I know where she is. Where is she? She's coming here. They're coming here. That's why to I'm here. The Skull Rock Manor? No, no, no. To the, the, the big, the gapey thing that I jumped in. Underneath. Oh, oh! She, the, I know what it's called. But she doesn't. You, you think she's down there? Not yet, but they're they're gonna be here. Oh my I god! I start super serious and like 
looking in on this conversation. Yeah, Wait, it was... Padinka just sort of sits back and is, like, rocked. She's like, she never really expected She's to a rock gnome. find anything, so she's just sort of leaning against a wall with her eyes really big. That's why I'm here. You guys can help me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess, okay. Then I, well, I guess that means staying here makes more sense. I think we need to get prepared. Definitely. Well, first we have to, like, I'm already prepared. sign some legal papers. I mean, I need some mint drink. And start a bar. If there are any curtains, don't touch them. <laughs> and get rid of a horse. She's she's really sort of like just struggling to sort of put together the timeline of things she needs to do now, because she, she Mister, we're taking the house. Irks like I can handle yeah. that horse. Oh yes, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> if you could just um. How old is that horse? Falun and I go. Uh, However, you're still going to be renting a room from us. Oh, uh, yes, of course. To make sure you finish your book. Ah, uh, yes. My book. I will finish and my book. You will take 5% or whatever sales you make off that book. Uh, no, just 5% of the profit. Well, yes. we will help you to yes. write your book. Yes, that I, I would be happy to give you 5% of the profit of the book. Um, this That would... Plural. I'm only Honey, on one okay, at the moment. Padink has heard money again and is sort of back in the game. How much profit did you ever make off of any of your other books? I'm looking forward to it. Uh huh. Okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> let's get wow. self let's get ourselves down to that magistrate. Uh, and Irk, can you please go get Yagra because we need to talk business. We have. A proposition for her, uh, which I think she'll appreciate. Um, and uh, then we need and to book she has any acrobatic and... friends, uh, tell her to bring them to bring them along. <laughs> Ac acrobatic friends, yes. Uh, that might get a different response than expected, but we'll. Um, so uh, the magistrate and she's looking to make money without getting into trouble. How about that? And uh... and we need to come up with a name. Yes. Doesn't it have a name? I mean, this well, is we can, we can keep Manor, it. but you can keep, you can do anything you want with it. If we rename the house, does that rename the street? I don't believe so. Because I saw that there was a snail street, and I would love to live <laughs> on snail street. Well, I was thinking something more along the line of something to do with Gemma, but... Yes. Who's Gemma? This. This is Gemma. <laughs> Did you ask before you licked her? Not food. No, no means, means no, no, Irk. No means no. Yeah, we're we're big into consent, Irk. I, I think you need, you need to, to. I think you need to apologize to Gemma. Yeah. yeah. Isn't isn't Gemma a rock? She is more than a rock. She's a friend. And a rock. And a rock. <laughs> With googly eyes. Uh, sorry, Gemma. Gemma, do you accept the apology? Can I roll if she accepts it? <laughs> I'm gonna roll a d20. You set her down on the table and her eyes jiggle up and down saying, like, a yes. <laughs> I'm, gonna, oh. I'm gonna roll a d4. If it's an even number, she said yes. If it's an odd number, she said no. I really like the idea real quick. Mm -hmm. The gem state. House and saloon. Please tell me there are some Deadwood fans in here. <laughs> so Gemma does not accept the apology. Okay. Uh, so um, let's see. Uh, I think. So um, the magistrate. <laughs> we're just gonna have to take three damage. Roll over to the magistrate. <laughs> No, no damage taken. Uh, but uh, you definitely are reminded that while everyone else cleaned up 
Uh, Gemma did not get a bath after the sewer, so you're like, mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of the, the vengeance there. Um, Got any of that mint wine? But, uh, so you are you are taken uh, to the magistrate. You, I assume, uncuff Volo, and he is happy to, uh, you know, uh, take care of that and make arrangements that uh, you will uh, receive a small amount of rent for the room that you are renting to him, and I assume you give him the smallest uh, and meanest of the rooms. Um, that would be um, the spare bedroom, the spare room with the horse in it, right? The spare room with the horse in it. The room where if he has to go leave, he has to walk past my room. So I would probably... So yeah, the spare room. I would probably say the worst of the rooms would be the, the attic bedroom, but you can make of that, you can do what you, do what you wish. Uh... But as this is being arranged, Volo takes you over yeah, to see the magistrate. Watering. Magistrate is a tiefling uh, named Kyleen. And, uh, what color? What color? Tiefling? tiefling? Yes. Auburn. Okay. I just remember that um, What's-His-Face said that how many bubblegum pink tieflings do you know? And he was like, you're the only one here. So yeah, I, just, I yeah. wanted to make sure. Yeah, Auburn. But he wasn't lying to me. She's stripped like a what most would consider to be a normally colored tiefling. They sort of range in that black to red spectrum that is very commonly depicted among demons. And then every once in a while you get like a pink. Or a blue or a or green. Blue. I mean, blue's in the flame Purple. range. I mean, you just don't go out tanning enough to get that nice auburn color. Oh yeah, you're right. I stay indoors. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you just spend a little time in the sun, it brown you right up. Uh, but uh, Kylin, uh takes care of the seal and, you know, sort of says, well, it, it is 25 gold, and Volo sort of looks at you. I look at Volo. Volo looks at uh, his, his good friend Rainier, Never Ember, and Rainier just sort of sighs and says, all right, what? That's, uh, what's his face's dad, correct? That is the son. Oh, that's the son. That is the son. That is the That's not Daddy Never Ember. Yes, that is not Daddy Never Ember. Daddy Never Ember hasn't been around. Uh, he was run out of town, run out of town in disgrace, with the rumor that he had stolen an enormous amount of money. Um, and Rainier's getting into a bit of trouble because of it. That is why Floon was kidnapped and mistaken for Rainier. But money changes, money. money changes hand. The deed is notarized and returned back to you. Copy sent into the city to put on file. And congratulations, you are now collectively. Uh, landowners in the town of Waterdeep. Um, Yagra was the next conversation point? I think so. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Yagra eventually comes over and, you know, punches Urk, or punches back, I think. Uh, sort of, you know. They flex at each other? Yeah, it's a little. Ta -da. Ta -da. Uh -uh. And a different flexing, you know. And then, like, she's like, all right, you know, flex a little bigger, but hey, sword skills. Brrr. And, you know, she's I'm a little still older. Little... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that exchange. I don't remember which the profession was that would have raised an eyebrow. Miss McRune Forge. Sorry, Twitch. Got me. Um,. So we'll figure out which Acro profession the acrobatics. The acrobatics was that it? Ah, uh, it's I'm probably thinking, what like, that I'm was. I'm thinking like on the weekends or like like Friday night, Saturday night. We try to do like a little acrobatics, maybe like a little like people put on a little show. Maybe on like a Tuesday night, we could have a poetry reading to try to get some of the people from the bookstore over, and he could try to sell some of his books. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I think uh, Tuesday uh, should be trivia, and then Wednesday should be poetry night. You sort of okay. lost Yagra on the whole book reading part, but she's like, oh, you need some second story work done? No problem. I know people. Um, also, need oh, and make... brewery stuff for Yagra, like to work with yeah. Ashley. Uh, yeah, so so Yagra, what we would really love is we know that you had a lot of restrictions over at the bar you're working at now, and uh, that maybe you have had uh, some issues with your own creative vision for it. What we're offering you is a chance to run your own bar. I mean, that's pretty tempting. Um, but, we have, uh, I mean, you we, know, I, mean, I, you know I, I work for people, right? And yeah. You know that I can't quit 
the people I work for. And why not? Oh, well, would you know anybody who would be interested? Well, I mean, I'm interested, but you understand if I'm working here, I'm still working for them. And I have no problem with that. that. Anybody have a problem with that? No, I thought we were working with them too. We are. Well, so, that's why you're here. Yeah, with just... them, with them, not for them. Well, true wording. Right Depends. now, we're with them, not for them. Well, I mean, do you want to work for them? It's, it's we're lucrative. sort of free agents. Um, I mean, is there somebody we would need to talk to to set up a sort of deal where there could be a location for them here to run whatever they need to do? And then we, you know... <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Look the other way. I mean, it's we're. I don't know that we're interested yeah. in having masters over us. So, how about this? Uh, oh, our own shit. Deville Excuse is the. Twitch. Whoop! Sorry. Was that to me, Jamie? No. Excuse my language. Nope. Uh, no problem. I just I didn't catch it if it was directed to the game. Um. So Yager's like, uh, well, look. Um. There's this guy, Deville. Uh. We'll go talk to him. See if he's got any jobs worth doing. You think he does? Do some work. Get a good rep with the guild. And, you know, maybe we send a little profitable stuff through here. Um, maybe they say I can come work here. That'd be great. I love it. But, uh, you know, they don't want to lower their representation on the docks. And, you know, aside from my brother, I'm probably the biggest strong arm they've got in here. And, you know, Erk, he doesn't do so good on the docks. All right, well, I mean, we're... I'm sure we could look at whatever jobs that are there and decide whether we are able to do them or not. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how about this? Um, how about we bring DeVille over? We'll have him take a look around and uh, see, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe we want to make an investment in this place. Or not. You kind of make the call there. But, uh, you know, just keep in mind, you don't mess with them. Okay? Right. No no duplicious dealings. We're going to be straightforward and honest. And Well, I mean... Well, we're going to be straightforward. Straightforward. <laughs> Does that honest. mean I have to watch what I say and I can't be a jerk? No, 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 no. Just, uh, you know, don't... Uh, I don't want to have to kill you. So... Well, we don't want you to have to kill us either. I, I mean, Eric gets a pass, but I'll break his arms again. Huh. Hey. Hey. You remember what happened last time? She's bluffing. Bluffing? I still limp. Um, so, uh, a couple of days pass, enough time to, you know, do a little housekeeping, you know, sweep most of the dust bunnies out of the way, uh, and, you know, arrange enough of the tables that you can sit down and have a conversation. Uh, can I have a quick religion check from everybody in the party? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm just going to get so killed. so religious. <laughs> wow, Simone's on it. Wow. Everybody else, not so much. Uh, so, there are things that you might do uh, when you acquire a house. Uh, you know, certain things that happen. Salt in the corners, candles, turn a shoe inside out. Weird stuff, just to ward off spirits and demons, that sort of stuff. Um, but only one of you gets it right. Everybody else just has a creeped out feeling after the first couple of nights. Uh, but uh, Simone, totally fine. Good place. Nothing weird here. Would uh, be the one who'd be like super stereotypically like just superstitious about everything. Just you, you, you did the things, all the stuff like you, you knocked it down. You're like, all right, we got to make sure this goes over here. We don't point our shoes, shoes towards the door, all that stuff. And, well, I uh, hate houses. I hate houses, so that this is why. Yeah, you know. 
You make sure you sleep with your head facing house. away from the door. Um, so everybody else is having like weird dreams. They're waking up. It's just a kind of a creepy old feel to the place. Nothing, you know, no knives came throwing at you, flying at you or anything, but weird. Um, but oh, after, we're back up to full health. But you back up to full health. You have the benefits of a full rest. Could um, you just tell me one more time what the name of the gentleman who is coming to see us is? Deville. Thank you. The villain. The villain. And is he a uh, human or um? Uh, oh, Deville. Like... Oh, his name's Star Song. Deville Star Song. Uh, he doesn't like uh, people when they mention it, but he is a bit of a showy figure. Oh, look you, at him! Oh my gosh, do you think we can get, like, out of character, do you think we can get him to cross-dress and we can do, like, a drag show night? <laughs> uh, That'll so, be our Fridays. So, so Deville is an <laughs> elf, uh, so his age is completely indeterminate. Uh, and Yagra has let you know that, hey, you know, don't mess with Deville, but... Gorgeous hair. Uh, he's got the hair, he's got the look, he's got the sword. Uh, you know, in the past, uh, he, he did some adventuring, and now he's sort of settled down to monitor the town, so it seems, uh, and act as his Zentarum agent here. Though the word Zentarum doesn't tend to come up, they're just business folks, people with allied interests. Uh, and Teville comes in, looks around. Good location. Uh, he sits down with you now. Uh, Yager explained to me there might be a business opportunity here, and I hear uh, you did some work for Volo. Good work. Uh, you know, hear that uh, a warehouse was involved that some of my business associates had interests in. That was dealt with well, and I heard you deal with some folks who my business associates have a distinct interest in seeing stop doing business. That was handled well. So, we would be interested in engaging your valuable services and hearing what you have to say about this valuable property. So, uh, what are you interested in doing with or for us? We like well, Yagra. Ah, uh, that's good. She's a likable woman. We want to give her the world. And by the world, I mean this crappy bar. Well, eventually, what we would like to have happen is uh, find someone who would be willing to run the tavern section of this establishment. None of us are tavern aficionados. We acquired this property out of uh, the necessity of taking payment in some form, uh, out of a business deal that went awry for us last time. So. Um, that is our eventual goal is to have that up and running. We understand that your organization would have the means to have that happen. I know that you would need some form of trust from us uh, and to, uh, you would like us to prove our worth by working for you, I believe. That would be a good start. I do have a few uh, things that you could take care of for us. Uh... Well, we're not interested in um, breaking the law, but I believe all of us understand how to bend it uh, if that's necessary. We are adventurers. We have many things that were many goals of, of our own, but uh, if you have projects that need to be done uh, that you would be willing to share with us, we'll let you know if we can do them or not. Well, uh, how about this? This is a bit of a public knowledge and would be a public service and wouldn't actually be breaking the law, be helping enforcement. You see, there's uh, someone hunting elves, half-elves, down by the dock. Uh, three dead Sounds so far. Sounds Yeah, I'm not a fan. There's three dead so far, each one of them decapitated, head clean off uh, by a blade, dead of the night. City Watch, uh... They don't do a lot of work at the night in the dock ward, and these elves and half-elves didn't have a lot of money. They weren't members of my association. Still, you gotta look out for your own. Are they members of another association? None that I know of. 
So what you're saying is there's no other tie other than the fact that they're elves and half-elves to each other and happen to be in the docks as for why they were um, uh, cut off, so to speak. I'm not a big fan of those who are hunting elves. So I can't I'm imagine you would be. In the town? Sorry, say it again. Do we know any racist groups in this town? So, uh, I think maybe a history? Get you some insight on that one? Let's do it. Let's do it. How much does it Why pay? Would... It pays your sister getting a bar. Nine. So <laughs> Jamie, you have like one history. Can somebody can I can I roll? <laughs> So, uh... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You're like, yeah! The town's full of racists! <laughs> yes, so, so Ashley just starts getting all the fire and brimstone going and just like, oh, racism! And Padigas like, just calm down for a second there. What are they doing at the docks at night? So... Sorry, go ahead and answer Ashley's question. I'm just still on that question in my head. So there are a number of groups that do, uh, you know, support almost any racial combination. You have those who are uh, elven elitists. You have those who are dwarf elitists. You have those who are not really halflings. Halflings never seem to get into trouble um, or get into uh, that sort of thing. But They're friendly. They are. Um, human by and large, is on the uptick at the moment. So the largest number of groups trying to put down the other races tend to be humans um, trying to put down the other races, often because of the long lives and seeming ease of life of the other races. Humans generally have a very bad view of elves, sometimes of gnomes, and usually it's jealousy. Um, elves are just categorically better than humans. Is there going to be a protest that elf lives matter? There could be, uh, okay. but we're going to okay. just... I might help organize this as a non-elf. So, for those of you out there, yes, but in this case... Uh, no. No. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, no worries. Uh, so, but yeah, elves and half-elves uh, on the, in the dock ward, three dead so far. And, uh, yeah, I could use somebody to just, uh, take a look. Now, it's going to be dangerous. Danger and... is not does he... a problem. Does... Okay, so so before I start going into all these questions, does Zaville have detailed information that he can give us on what happened? Or is this something where, like... Because so... I have a lot of questions about, like, what happened, when it happened... There's Why also are they out there at night? You know, like, has this been looked into at all? Has anybody been looking into this? So, what he can give you is, uh, look. So, this would be doing a favor for me. So, I'll do a favor for you. Uh, let's say, uh, you know, if you can catch this killer before the next attack, worth, uh, 250 gold to me. We don't like problems in the docks. Definitely don't want the problem getting big enough that the docks get more attention from the city watch. So, it's good if it gets handled quickly and quietly. Now, of course, if it gets handled, you can go ahead and turn the culprit in, or you can take the culprit out. Up to you. Culprit turns out to be a noble person. You know, make sure nobody finds out. We gotta but, be sneaky. Well, you know about the rules, right? You've seen the law? Yes! I'm, I'm gonna reach into my scroll case and I'm gonna pull out the very long list of rules that was given to me by the nice guard lady. Yeah, that. So, that uh, doesn't work in our favor often. So, be careful. Now, 250 gold if you stop the next murder. 250 gold if no murder happens. Maybe the, maybe the culprit left. Who knows? Might make some free money, but uh, not likely. Now, as far as when it happened, it's been over the last six nights. So it's not happening every night. Down in the dock ward, sailors, alone, making their way back to the boats, usually drunk. They're not rowdies. They're not uh, locals. They're nobody 
who we didn't really, really pay attention to. And probably if I wasn't so worried about elves dying, I wouldn't have noticed. But uh, you, know, you keep your out. How many murders were there? Three so far. Well, three that we know of with this telltale signature head clean off. And Wait. what days did this happen, or nights? Six nights ago, four nights ago, and two nights ago. Every other every day. Night. Eh. I don't know it's enough to be a pattern, but seems it. It's always down by the docks. It's always been in the dock ward. Well, tonight's the next night. Is Could he be. able to give us um, specific locations? Like, does, Do any of us have like a map? So, uh... The Bolo has a guide to Waterdeep, right? Does that yes. have a map? So in it? You, do, you are you you do have uh, access to maps, and he does give you that uh, the dock ward. Um, basically, you need to kind of patrol the area. Uh, Ship Street would be the most likely area that you would be patrolling regularly, but there's several other alleys you'd be cycling about, kind of keeping an eye on folks if you were working on this case. We don't have an uh, elf or half-elf in the party, right? No. I mean, not unless somebody has a makeup kit and they want to try to disguise me as one. You'd I would like to keep you in stealth mode when we're doing this, as opposed to using you as bait. What if we all kind of look... Like, what if we... How many of us are there? Five? Mm -hmm. Five of us? What if we pair up and Simone stays in stealth mode, and we use the Raven to send signals. If we're patrolling different areas, that way we can keep an eye on things. That, okay. That's yeah. a good st strategy. So it looks strategy, like... But can we set a trap with DeVille? Or he seems can... like he's obviously been very capable of handling himself, but maybe... Or do you have an associate that we could work with you know, I usually the honeypot trick works. Um, we would protect your person. So and Deville, kind of, Deville kind of holds his hand up. He's like, "Yeah, we stop you there." This is part test. I could take care of this myself, but uh, looking to give you an opportunity to do me a favor. Ah. So, what you've been saying, I like your ideas, but uh, let's see if you can come up with results. You can use whatever resources you have available to you. But if I got to pull my people in, I'm not really doing a favor. Understood. So, uh, group, are we interested in taking on this job? I don't like anybody dying unnecessarily, but I am concerned there's something else going on that we're not being told. And DeVille's like, there's always something else going on that you're not being told. This is uh, part of the business. I think if there's somebody killing people, then we should not let them do that. I agree. Do we have... Uh, is there any other knowledge checks that we can do to make sure that we think that this is really a person doing this as opposed to a creature? It is down by the docks. There might be some sort of aquatic creature or... So I think what you would need to do at this point is that seems like something where you'd want to inspect the body or okay. talk to the air quotes, investigation team, uh, which would be leaning on some police contacts. Right now, the only police contacts or uh, authority contacts that I'm aware that you have would be either the rather stuck-up uh, captain or your female friend. Uh, are either of those who you're talking about or are you looking to uh, find someone new? Uh, we, there's a private eye on this block, isn't there? There is a private they eye on this block. Private eye. They might be able to give us some information or at least give us some some leads on officers we could ask. A discreet officer who's not going to trail us and then try to pin us for a crime. She was kind of mean. Yeah, because you weren't at all suspicious. You know, why would, why would that result in, you know, solid actual police work? I know, told her she could come to the party. Or guard work. Uh, so, uh, what we're about to embark on is actually called carousing. 
uh, which is basically uh, going out and trying to make friends. The making friends that you're about to try and do is with uh, a lower uh, society member. And in this Hold case... Hold on a second. We yep. met a bunch yep. of people in the tavern with numbers. Would have, any of yeah. them be able to help us? Uh, they, or uh, have they, those interactions not happened yet? Those interactions will be happening over time. Uh, okay. And might, might be involved in this. So, if you wish to go carousing, carousing, uh, it does cost 10 gold pieces, which is basically you taking some time and going out and buying people drinks and being interested in them and such things. Uh, and normally, this would be a one-week activity. But if all five of you are working together on it, you can condense that down to today's work, but you got to spend all the money at once. Are we... Would that still leave us time to get to the docks by night? This That's what basically you're doing. You're rushing oh. through it, scrambling yeah. to get in time for the docks. Is that we... 10 gold each? Well, uh, 10 gold once, one, one payment. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nothing. So we each ship it in two for this? Yeah. I'm okay with that. Okay. okay. And then could and we, we didn't get we didn't get paid by, at all by the, today. By, the, no. by the way, Irk still needs money for his cloak. Uh, well, already, we don't have, have, have anything. We deducted the five gold from Irk. Okay. 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 So Irk will get the cloak. Uh, the cloak, cloak will take about a week to make uh, between tanning and stitching and that sort of stuff. And then you'll have your cloak. Uh, but at the moment, if I could ask someone to please make a charisma persuasion roll, so persuasion roll, for the party, you want to roll high. Should probably be me. Mine's a two. My, my charisma's a three. Uh, you persuasion. said straight charisma or persuasion? Per persuasion. Persuasion. I have a three as well. My persuasion is a five. Mine's a one. Hmm. All right. I there guess I'm rolling. Irks a zero. <laughs> I get a help action because everybody's. Re yes, I'm helping. Right. Are we? No help on this <laughs> one. Oh, but even with the, even if I had been kind and gave you the help. Um, oh God. So, uh, Padinka, I the, the the authority figures just smell you coming a mile away. It, like, yeah, I just bought a tavern and I want to ask about some dead people, and they're just like, I am not getting involved with you right now. Like. Look, whatever, whatever you're Tadinka's into. Tadinka's muttering that stupid motherfucking guy told everybody about me. Yeah, look. All right. Mm -mm. Nope. Like each one, each one you start to approach, it's like, mm. nope. You start walking over with drinks. They're just like, take the drinks. Thanks. Bye. Owls get to roll. Is it just her? Just her on that one. So. Okay. Uh, Sorry, guys. Yeah, the the lead in okay. was just a little too obvious, and they're like. I mean, they're not rude about it, but they're definitely not interested in revealing case information. Information. I was off my game because I was thinking about Yuri. So uh, what we are left with, and uh, we're rolling on about up to 10 o'clock, so we'll start to wrap up here, uh, is uh, down by the docks, a elves and half-elves are being killed. The party has started to make plans as to how they will be monitoring, pairing up, and then keeping an eye on it. Uh, so when we pick up again next week, uh, we will be doing a uh, plus 10 sexy on the cloak. That seems like a big number, but... Uh, oh, that was me and I'm biased. That's fine. Uh, it was a plus 10 charisma ahead of that, so, you know, it's a little on both sides. The party will be working on the pursuit of a killer... Uh, it sounds like it's going to be a honeypot style trap. Uh, does the party have any leads on an elf that they would like to use or a way that you wish to acquire one or dress up as one? What's the plan? I mean, I have a disguise. Uh, I think you have a disguise kit too, but um, like costume gnome and to elf is, is like... Yeah, gnome to elf is going to be a little hard. We're going to need someone more Well, no, I could dress size. somebody else up. Okay. I don't yeah. think there are pink elves. There are, or but green. not your type. Uh, and you're a little broad for elf. I think it would have to be Simone. Or Ashley. Ashley's or, human, right? Uh, uh, what about Flume or Lord Never Ember? Flume is so pretty, Never that would Ember. work. Because Lord Never Ember, like, 
you know, like I said to him, he needs to step up his game and start helping out. So Lord Never Ember is a noble person. Uh, and we don't want to get him killed. Yeah. We, we need to use somebody who isn't known because all of the people were just sailors that were trying to get home. Yeah, Lord yeah. Never Ember also was just recently the target of a kidnapping attempt and is not super excited about putting himself in harm's way. Can can we when go we out... to the docks and talk to the sailors that are there? Sure. Uh, and maybe we'll convince somebody that, like, you know, they have to be out that night anyway, that we'll be on their six, we'll know where they are. Okay. Could I see a uh, wisdom perception check? Uh, I know uh, you're working in teams of two with one person as a spotter. Yeah, that was going to be Simone, right? South around. Okay. I think okay. we should put muscle yeah. with magic. So can I have mm -hmm. can I have uh, one person each from the teams roll perception with advantage? So team A and team B, one person from each roll with advantage. And the spotter just roll a straight perception check. I think I would probably team myself up with Padinka just because I know she can heal me. Okay. Okay. That's probably Irk like smart. And Ashley, Irk and Ashley. Irk so, and Ashley. So Irk and Ashley, can I have a perception roll from one of you? Uh, Padinka and, <laughs> and Clarity, can I have a perception roll from one of you? And then Simone, can I have a perception roll from you? So Simone's uh, rocking the 14. My perception's two, so. Mine's four. Uh, yeah, how about you look? By I the way, two. my bird's helping out. It's passive minus perception four. of 13. For Gotta her. do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Minus two. I was looking at Eric. <laughs> Wait, what? Who's who's minus two? No, 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 no. Mine is two. Oh, yours is two. I was looking at Eric. <laughs> well, you go, go ahead and roll your two anyway. Okay. Perception, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Team Irk and Ashley. Team Irk and Ashley are on it. Uh, so as the uh, two teams and then the loner uh, spread out uh, through the dock street and talk into the night, um, most of the sailors seem to have the good sense to stay put. Uh, they, you know, tend to drink and then fall where they lie or get drunk, uh, drunk in the boats themselves. Um, only one really seems like, uh, a potential target and Irk is the one who, uh, sort of knocks it down. Uh, a half-elven sa sailor named Heldar, um, seems like the only real target on the street at the moment. And that is where the uh, two teams and the spotter will be converging. Um, something may happen, something might not. Since it's going to be a adventure, probably something's going to happen. Uh, but we'll pick that back up next week. Um, everyone is fully rested, so please make sure you have all of your hit points, all of your spells, and such things. And um, in uh, a few more days, we'll have a fancy new alligator cape. But at the moment, we're waiting for that to appear. Excuse me, I'm being assaulted by a kitty cat. So, <laughs> there's a kitty cat. Um, but, questions, comments, concerns before we wrap it up and say goodnight to Twitch. Where's Bubbles? Uh, Bubbles Please show us Bubbles. out that way somewhere. She's, she was not the one who was chewing on my fingers. I know. Matter. No, it's, it's actually Ishka. Ishka is the one who was just... <laughs> Just Bubbles came up here is my favorite, hello. and I long to see her. She, I'm sure, will come bother me soon. But, kitty attack can at the you, end. Can you tell me what that half-elf's name is, please? The half-elven sailor? Yes. Is named Heldar. H-E-L-D-A-R. And he is quite drunk. And very happy that so many uh, friendly people were interested in him. Um, <laughs> a little disappointed that you're like, you should go home now. He's like... Oh, um, I guess I'll make my way back to the boat. Lonely, lonely boat. <laughs> I will have a webcam by uh, next weekend. I really thought it was going to be as easy as just going over to Best Buy, <laughs> picking it up, but they really don't want to sell one for less than 50 bucks. Yeah. You can, always, 
You can use your cell phone, or if you have a tablet, you can use that too sometimes. I didn't think about that. Boy. Oh. I thought about messaging you that, but you had so much other stuff going on, I didn't want to distract you from work. I had to almost sell that car. Oh. Get him next time. I don't know. But on that note, I will say goodnight, Twitch, and hit the stop button goodnight, here. Twitch. Thanks, Bye, everybody, Twitch. for joining us and keeping us entertained. Bye. Thanks for watching us, weirdos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> the nerds. Uh, so like, follow, and obey. Uh, Twitch.tv front slash Captain Reboot. And eventually it will show up on the YouTubes. Uh, on the YouTubes, it is Captain R3 Boot. Um, because there were other Captain Reboots, apparently. Um, but good night, all. Bye!